Hallelujah. Shurama Kea. Hallelujah. Well, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just so I'm just so blessed and so thankful for the people who came into the meeting tonight and set an atmosphere through prayer. I don't have to spend half the service trying to break the thing open. <laughs> Praise God. That's wonderful. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. I like to come up and come into the meeting in the heavenly realm instead of having to be at the ground floor. There you go. Say, day or Rasu. Hallelujah. Because you keep doing that, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a place where you'll find an anointing in your, in your life being, being manifest through your life that will break off every yoke. <laughs> that will will reveal the very presence and person of Jesus Christ. So that the things that belong to the will of the Father, the things that belong to the kingdom of God will be made manifest through your life. Yes. Uh, when we take personal responsibility... Tonight, tonight I'm going to begin to talk to you a little bit more about some things that, concerning how that we may actually speed up the day of the Lord in which the heavens and the earth being on fire shall melt with a fervent heat. And God will bring forth a new heaven and new earth wherein dwells only righteousness. We'll talk to you a little bit more about speeding it up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, you sound like to me like you're messing with the sovereignty of God. I'm not messing with the sovereignty of God. His sovereignty is intact. I'm talking about your response and your responsibility. That's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that Father is going to do the thing. He's going to bring it to pass on a day on his time scale. Whether people participate or not, God's going to have his, God's going to have his way in the earth. If he's got to do it, you know what? Father, Father could take on the whole world with his glory with 300 people. Well, I'll just lower it. I'll make it lower than that. He'll take on the whole of the earth with 120. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's all he needs. I got to say, I tell you, no Well, this, the more that you'll give yourself to the things of the Spirit, then ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself participating with the divine purposes of God. You must understand that the Lord has called us to come into a realm where we live by the Spirit, where we live by the Holy Ghost. Look, you watch out. There's people around you. They've never become grounded. They've never become settled. And I'm telling you, listen, don't you mark those people and you pray for them till they get grounded and they get settled. There's wishy-washy people all over the place, and all they do is constantly run interference with the establishment of God's of God's people in the house. You be careful. You be careful. You watch out for wishy-washy folks. Because that you don't look. I'm going I'm to say this because I'm telling you, I'm, 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 a sh I'm a shepherd. I'm right there with Christ Jesus. I don't like to see any wishy-washiness. I'm telling you, don't be, don't be goatee. Don't be goatee. Don't get around the sheep and start leading them some other place, influencing them. If a person's going to be wishy-washy, let me encourage you. Be wishy-washy on your own. Don't wishy-washy other folks along with you. Amen. I tell you, the Lord said, is it better for you that you not enter into life than to cast a stumbling block from one around the, one of the least of these? And if there's anything that I just want to emphasize tonight, dear people, is you're going to understand your behavior and your actions have huge impact upon people. And you've got to become responsible in these things. The Lord has purposed that through this wonderful deliverance. See, deliverance has come out of Zion. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the deliverer that has come out of Zion. Christ Jesus, the deliverer, has come. And I think that we're going to have to just quit using the word salvation and start using the word deliverance so that people understand exactly what we're talking about. You got delivered out of the realms of sin and iniquity. And I'm, I know that Satan would try to bombard your mind with all of those things that belong to the world. And you're just going to have to learn that you're in the midst of a battle and the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Hallelujah. 
Look at my tell you. Now, I'm going to tell you, you get around people who love praying in the Holy Ghost, who love staying in church, who love talking about the things of God. If you're around people who want to talk about the last and latest thing that happened on the, as the world churns, I mean, as the world turns or whatever else it is, forget about it. Because I'm telling you, that is leading you in the wrong direction. You're taking fire into your bosom and you're going to be burned. It's the spirit of the world and it has a consequence when it has place to work in your mind and your actions and in your attitude God has called us to walk in the spirit to live by the spirit to be led by the spirit what a wonderful realm of divine glory and he put it upon the level that you and I would be privileged to come and drink of the miracle provision that he has for us so that there would come forth the bursting force of the of the glory of God like the breaking forth of water like the not just a little bit either <laughs> Like rivers gushing out. I mean, I'm telling you right now. That's going to do more than just get people a little soggy. Right. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going you're to get swept away in the river of his presence. Father wants you to begin to speak by his spirit Think by the spirit Live by the spirit What a wonderful realm to live in He wants his, his purpose That his spirit would come upon all flesh And that you would prophesy And that has a lot more to do Than just what you're going to be uh, doing In the midst of the church it has more to do with this just singing the high praises of the Lord. It's having the speech and the manner of your conduct and the things that you're declaring coming out of your mouth being those things which God is saying so that you don't mislead yourself or people around you now. Listen to me. Because your words are seed And your words will produce within people's lives Blessings or curses I'm telling you Father said as surely as I live He said uh, The earth will be filled with my glory My goodness And that how, how is that coming to pass The prophet said That as the water covers the sea So the world, the earth Would be filled with the knowledge of the Lord how is that beginning to happen? It happens because God's got a people who are willing to understand how to participate with a heavenly program and live by the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And walk in the Spirit. And have your conversation or your lifestyle as as uh, Paul said to the church of Philippians, in heaven, having your lifestyle, as Peter said in the context of speeding up the, speeding up the day of the Lord. Looking unto and speeding up the day of the Lord. Having your conversation, your lifestyle in all holiness and godliness. Knowing and recognizing that you're in, inspect, you're in expectation for the Lord Jesus to come. For him to come and this, thing, this whole thing be dissolved with a fervent heat. <laughs> this whole thing be completely recreated in him and his absolute and sovereign rule. And that's something you and I have to begin to take a part of right now. And when we read in Joel chapter 2, we hear about the army of God. We're hearing, about a, we're hearing about what's going on right now within the framework of what you and I are supposed to be engaged in doing. When we read in Joel chapter 2 about the army of God, it's no different than what Paul is referring to in Ephesians chapter 6 when he tells us to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, to take on the whole anointing of God, the whole armament of God, the whole battle armor, the whole protective armor, the whole power, the ability to do war against all these things and be successful. His, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> there's nothing that can stand against the sword of the Spirit. There's nothing that can stand uh, uh, around in the realms of darkness against the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation works. It works. The helmet of salvation works. You have the helmet of salvation and you've got your mind uh, and your loin is are girded up with truth then you have the ability to function in the mind of Christ and by that God power the mind of Christ the anointing of the Holy Ghost in that realm you can pull down and cast down these imaginations that want to make something perverted out of you they want to make something ugly and demonic out of you that want to try to work its wickedness through your life because that's where the battle is and so I want you to I'm going to show you about real quickly and just Lay these things out for you. I got so much to say, and I don't have enough time to say it in. And so, but the thing tonight I'm going to get, I, the thing I want to, I, I, the, the thing that God is laboring to do is to cause you to recognize that He will anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with power. 
He will give you the ability to live by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and be led by the Spirit. But you've got to be willing. God is saying these things right now. He's looking for a people who will come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord. A people who will participate with that which He's purposed to do. A time of refreshing. So, got a lot of verses of Scripture. Got to try to do this here. Now, if I stop and said, now I'm prophesying, now I'm going to give an interpretation of tongues. Now I'm going to speak by the word of knowledge. I'd be spending most of the night just bringing attention to myself. So you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to begin to profit by it. Because I'm telling you, if you'll begin to recognize the things of the Holy Spirit, then you'll be able to function in them. Hallelujah. Yeah, I saw the Spirit. I saw the anointing all over you. I saw prophecy all over you just a little bit ago. I mean, we had to give you the microphone. You could have preached away. But it's supposed to be that way all of the time. And then you sit there with that thing burning on the inside of you. And what happens is one day God explodes you on the scene and sends you out to go reach a nation. That's what happens. That's how it works. Hallelujah. You sit under the anointing and see miracles and signs and wonders begin to take place. And you're not just off, you know, doing your own thing, thinking about your own stuff in your own space and time, worried or concerned about whatever issues going on, but you're hooked up. My, that's where you begin to function in the mantle, you see. And I pray in Jesus' name that as people, as God brings, as we function flowing the gifts of the Spirit. And, and as we operate in this wonderful dimension of the Holy Ghost that has been entrusted unto us, as we're growing and as we're maturing, you'll take hold of it and you'll go ahead and grow and mature with us in it. And then as we bring ministries in over this next year in 2015, that you'll profit every time because you sit up in your seat. First and foremost, you get yourself in a realm where you're able to even hear because they're going to speak. If they're, if they're coming here with something from heaven, they're going to be speaking out of the realms of the Spirit. And if you're not in that realm, it doesn't have any impact impact on you doesn't change nothing if you try to listen with the ear of your own human ability and experience and try to understand through your own reasoning and intellect and they get to work nothing's going to change but these things are grabbed by the holy ghost because you're so hungry because you're so thirsty because you're you doing what you were doing here tonight before when i when i came up and i'm going okay something happening now because i could hear people down here praying and i could hear you can hear people praying let me say that again when people pray, you can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't realize that. When you hear, when people are praying by the Holy Ghost, it's a thunder. God, listen, there ain't nothing in creation God did quietly. Huh? It's a thunderous, it's a thunderous thing. Praise God for the thunder that brings the rain. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know it's ear piercing. I know sometimes it shakes the place. But oh, the more it pierces your ear and the more it shakes the place, the greater benefit you're going to get from the provision that's fallen out of heaven. That's the way it is. And somebody said, oh, God's not deaf. He's not nervous either. <laughs> He's the one who created the shout. The shout is that which he demands. It's the shout that brings down the walls of Jericho and causes them to just fall straight down into the earth. Not crumble straight down into the earth. They fell straight down into the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. God's always doing spectacular miracles. He wants to do a spectacular miracle for you tonight. And that greatest miracle is to understand how to have access into a heavenly realm by the Holy Spirit. And that is at any moment, at any time, then you begin to enjoy that access. And that access then becomes stronger. Huh? The effect of it, more real, more powerful, more overwhelming. All of a sudden, you don't become your own man. All of a sudden, you don't tell God when you're going to come to prayer. He tells you, wow, what a transition. All of a sudden, you don't tell God when you're going to preach or when you're going to prophesy. He tells you. You don't tell him when you're going to read the word. He tells you. Oh, it's an amazing thing to become the servant of the living God, not your own man anymore. And all the glory and the majesty and the splendor of his presence that Father would reveal through you. And then you would participate with hastening a day, speeding up a time. Because now you're living in a round of set that literally says, not just with your mouth, but with your deeds, I want you to come and reign, Lord. I want this earth to be filled with your righteousness. I'm giving myself to seeing everything that Satan is doing destroyed. Instead of giving yourself and you're yielding your members as servants to him and weapons of unrighteousness. Can you imagine? All of a sudden you're just walking around minding your uh, own business and that's the biggest problem. <laughs> Instead of minding the business. And the next thing you know, you've fallen out to the enemy and your life is actually a weapon that Satan is willing against the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what happens every time you fall into sin and iniquity. 
And Father has purposed that you and I make a clean break. He is the deliverer. The deliverer is coming out of Zion. And everyone who calls upon his name shall be delivered. Delivered out of the stronghold and the claw and the grip of a satanic realm, a demonic dominion. To now have a changed heart to where you want the things of God and you hate the things of this world. You love the things of righteousness and hate that which is of evil. This change needs to come. Religion is run interference for this change. Many people believe they're born of God and they've only been born of religion. I've seen some very devout and spiritual Hindus. I've seen some very devout and spiritual Jews. I mean, when they get to worshiping man. Huh? And all they'll express to you about their devotion and love for God. And it is incredible. I mean, they, they really get into it. The Orthodox Jews, the Haradim, man, they know how to shake and move. They know how to praise God. They know how to, they know how to, you know, all of the natural things, all the human things. Boy, they can put it all together. They've always got the word out. Man, they memorize the word of God. All the way from Genesis to 2 Chronicles is where it ends with their, their Bible. Of course, all the other books are there, but it just is set up a little bit different. Oh, mighty God. I've seen a lot of devout, devout Buddhists. I've seen devout Mormons. How much you tell, I might tell you right now, i got some Mormon friends who will tell you about how much they love Jesus. I'm telling you. I, I can show you some Jehovah's Witness that are devout people, how they love God. I, I can take you some of these people that are, that are the uh, homosexual community church. And oh, they, nobody loves the Lord more than they love Him. And they, God's been with them all their life and done so many miracles and wonderful signs and wonders in their life. Nonsense. People, a spirit of strong delusion, no one is immune to. There is only one in the distinction, and there's the things that God says plainly in His Word, and the fruits that His Word produces in life of those who are obedient to Him. All else is just subject to evaluation and consideration. Huh? Somebody said to me, he said, Oh, a, a dear friend of mine is a wonderful minister of God, and he, he said, Oh, he said, Mark, not everybody believes the same thing that you believe about walking in the Spirit. I said, that's fine. It's just whoever walks in the Spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, well, listen, I'm just telling you right now, not everybody believes what you believe about walking in the Spirit. I said, that's fine. I understand that, but I know this. Whoever walks in the Spirit will not be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Well, everybody doesn't agree with what you say about walking in the Spirit. That is fine. I'm just going to qu keep quoting the Word of God. Because walking in the Spirit has a fruit. It has an evidence. It has a manner of life. It has a changed life. It has the very demonstration of the Spirit of holiness. And people want to escape responsibility and just say, Oh, I'll just talk about the sovereignty of God. God's sovereignty is intact. It's not in question. We can be certain of it, but we may also be equally certain that he has placed a responsibility upon every one of us. And it's not good enough to say, Lord, Lord. And it's not good enough to say, thy kingdom come. It's uh, what is absolutely essential is to do his will, to do the will of the Father. To do the will of the Father says you don't do iniquity anymore. He said you did not the will of the Father. Ye workers of iniquity, depart from me. I don't know you. There's never been an... Oh, but we love you so much, Jesus. Right. I'm believing God. The only thing that's going to help the Mormons, the Mormons are very close to salvation. All they've got to do is renounce the Book of Mormons and take just the Bible and denounce their heresy. They're so close. They're so close. All they got to do is recognize that Jesus is almighty God manifested in the flesh. And I'm believing God. They're so close. They're so close. They're so close. Their manner of lifestyle, their living, their commitment to the church is, is amazing. It's to be commended. They're so close. I'm believing God for a great revival. Wouldn't it be amazing to see a great revival, a great breaking forth of the Spirit of God among all those congregational people that got deceived back in the 18th? hundreds I'm believing God for it I'm not condemning him I'm believing God I and I pray that God will raise up some people who know how to go to war in the spirit who know how to go to war in prayer people always caught up in strife the spirit of strife's not changing nothing 
Because the spirit of strife is where you begin to yield your members unto sin and to become the servants of sin. Oh, what's going to happen when God's people begin to move like an army of God? What happens when God's people believe that they can have a river flowing out of them? A river of the inexhaustible expression of his divine power. And then what happens when there's enough of it? To where it is a, at a momentum that, that Satan can't persecute into obscurity. You see. Because I'm going to tell you right now. The more, the more a person is anointed. The more people who have problems with them. In the current day church. And it's been that way for a long time. You show me somebody. The, the one who's got the more anointing is the one that's going to, be, is going to be talked more about behind closed doors. And is going to be criticized uh, among uh, you know, the company of your friends. Because the spirit of the world hates the anointing. But what happens when all of God's people begin to move into this divine realm of being able to know how to put on Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. Who now understand how to flow and function and operate in the giftings of the spirit. Where the Lord said, I poured out my spirit upon all flesh. See, that is the initiation. That's the beginning of the spirit of the Lord covering the earth as the water covers the sea. The knowledge of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. This is the beginning of it. It's already happened. Jesus is going to be king someday. He's king right now. His kingdom isn't someday. His kingdom is now. He's already got a kingdom. And he's already got a people that are doing his will and his bidding in the earth. That they be scattered. Today I, I put something on. Early this morning I put something on the Facebook. And, and after I put it on the Facebook I was grieved. And so I thought, well, Lord, did you have a problem when I put it on Facebook? And I didn't get an answer. I was just grieved. That's an answer. Because when you live in love and joy and peace, and you grieve, something's wrong. And it doesn't take too long to learn how God talks. Hallelujah. Because he hooks up our heart with his heart, our spirit with his spirit, and it's a wonderful realm. And so I went back, and I read what I posted, and I said, well, that's very good. Oh, Lord, that's very good. It's very good. <laughs> it's all scriptural, and it's good, and it's powerful, and it's sharp. And then I went try to go back over here to what I was doing, greed. You know what I did? I went, I deleted it. You know what was happening right after I deleted it? Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you don't live in joy, if you don't live in peace, you can't hear him speak. Because he speaks on a very emotional level. He speaks on a very, a very qualitative level. Of love, joy, peace, the fruits of the Spirit, goodness, mercy, long-suffering. You know that the Holy Ghost is involved in your relationships around you because you have an exceeding amount of patience for people. You have an exceeding amount of love for people. You have an exceeding amount of blessings for people that are obnoxious and always basically creating problems. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's got to have it right in the relationship. Otherwise, it's never going to be right. Oh, it's so wonderful to learn how to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. You have to participate with God. You want to grow in the gifts of the Spirit? You've got to participate with the Holy Ghost. You've got to have, you're going to have to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to be a student of the Spirit. I want to learn how to live by the Spirit. In other words, to live in the Holy Ghost. How hard is it to be living in the Holy Ghost when He's come and filled us up and, and continually encourages us to continually be filled? How hard is it to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit when He has baptized us with His glory if we're willing to be filled? As I've said many times, if you've been around me, I can prove to you that being filled and being baptized in the New Testament context is equivalent. Hallelujah. Now, that is not hard to do. Praise God. God has made it so easy. And I'm telling you, if there's anything that we're in jeopardy of, is losing the Pentecostal movement in the midst of the Pentecostal churches. Because by and large, the Pentecostal movement is, not, is no longer existing in the Pentecostal churches where there is a rich moving of the Spirit of the living God, where there's a rich manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, where prophecy comes out thunderously, where there's people that are matured in prayer. When they pray, things happen and move around in the Spirit. You know, I, that's one of the reasons I like listening to people like Jeannie Wilkerson because, you know, she was there in the Pentecostal movement back in, you know, in the 20s because, you know, she was 
an, uh, an older lady in the, in the 60s and, and, and also people like Clara Grace and others who were there with Mariah Woodworth Edder and F.F. F. Bosworth and, you know, and, and, and they, were real, they were ancient. You know, they've been ministering by 50, uh, for 50 years in the church, some of these women and some of these men, by the time the 60s rolled around. And I, that's why I love to go look up their tapes because back in the 60s, they were actually had, they were taping the services, you know. <laughs> what a blessing. I love to sit and listen and reminisce about the Pentecostal movement. Because by and large, people don't know it, but the Pentecostal movement was eclipsed by the charismatic movement. And the charismatic movement was by and large a departure from Pentecost. It was a means by which God reached out to grab the Lutherans and, and, the, and to meet the Roman Catholics on their turf and to meet the Episcopalians on their turf. And it was a great moving of God in the Episcopalian church. But they were supposed to come on over and fully go in to the teaching of Pentecost rather than being left in the ditch of their religion with the expressions of the Spirit. They never grew. They never matured. And then all of a sudden, uh, suddenly, it became so impacted with over 70 million people that were influenced by the charismatic movement, it turned it. It turned the ship. It turned the ship. And now we've all but lost the Pentecostal movement. And what's got to happen is uh, there's got to be some people that are going to be valiant for the Lord, and they themselves are going to be entering in. You can't sit around and point the finger and say, oh, they're not in, um, you, know, the, you know, the church has departed from the Pentecostal movement. You're going to have to step in and get yourself some Pentecost. Because that's the only thing that's going to make a difference. And so, you know, let me read these verses of Scripture. It's hard for me to do that. Okay, because, I mean, the reality of it is, I have, just, I have to just go with what God the Holy Spirit is telling me. And so that's why I announced that I'm going to read something for an hour before I read it. And so that, just so that you will understand. And, and the Lord says here, I just start, uh, I'm going to start in, in um, Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad, then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain in the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. God's got a time scale. He's got a, he's got a moment in time when he's going to do these things. And I tell you, we're living in it. I'm telling you, we're not waiting for another year. It started 2,000 years ago. We've been in the first month. There's a day in the Lord and a year in the Lord. It's right now. It's not people are always relegating it to some future event. It's now. Now is the time of the manifested sons of God. Now is the time of the early and the latter rain. Now is the time of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now is the time of Pentecost. Now is the time of the great outpouring. Now God has poured out a spirit upon all flesh. It's not some time in the future. It is a now thing in God. It is this day. It is the moment of the reign of Christ Jesus the Savior who's exalted at the right hand of the Father on high who reigns with power and majesty and authority right now who Whose name is above every name. Anybody who believes can begin to function in a realm that is far superior to anything else that exists in this earth and in the world. It's time you get out of something in the future. It's time you understand that you have been deceived and lured into the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world. And you've been, and all of a sudden you've been choked and you're being choked and don't even know it by the thorns. Of earthly cares, selfish living. And Father wants you and I to undercome and have an encounter with Him so we can begin to look and behold the beauty and the splendor of what it's like to live in heaven. Because to have to do these things, to be made to do these things, truly is legalism. But when you've had an encounter with God, you don't want to do anything else but what Father designed and purposed when He poured out His Spirit. When he poured out the blood of Jesus at Calvary's cross. When he poured out for us all these good things that pertain unto life and godliness and glory and virtue. Now they're not obligations. It's freedom. Yeah. <laughs> it's liberation. It's the liberty of the Holy Spirit. Isn't something that is human and earthly in a religious experience. It's an expression where the Holy Spirit has taken control of every part of my being. And I'm giving him over every part of my being to fully saturate me in all of my thinking and conversation and communication. One day I was talking to the Lord about my, my granddaughter, Anna, 
who we so dearly love, who's watching uh, her papa preach right now. And uh, she needed a miracle in her heart, and God had worked so many miracles, being born one pound, three ounces, and she's just perfect. And they, I think they, used, they would take her to do x-rays on her, examinations on her on a daily basis because they couldn't believe that she didn't have a brain bleed. She never had one. Because the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Son was on her. But at any rate, there was this one miracle that we needed. And at the very end, and it didn't happen quick enough for everybody's time schedule. And so they went ahead and it was a simple operation procedure. So they went ahead and they did it. There was no risk in them doing it. It's just that I wanted God to do it. But I didn't want a mark on her body of men. And I said, Father... Why is it, I know that you called, you're waiting for a precious fruit to come forth from the earth and you have long patience until it happens, until we first receive all that the early and the latter rain has provided. Not for an event in the future, but for an event that has already been provided. He said to me very clearly, he said, you need to pray more in the Holy Ghost. That was just real simple, huh? Because there's where we build ourselves up. That's where we get strong. That's where we get mighty. Mighty and strong in what? Yeah. Building ourselves up in what? Building up means to be made strong, yeah. mighty. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's not some little personal encouragement to get you through your rough spot. Huh? That isn't what Pentecost is. It's an empowerment to fully represent the Lord Jesus Christ as his ambassadors and as his ministers here on this earth. To go everywhere doing the things that he's purposed and called us to do. When he said, come and follow me, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. If you drink anything, it shall not hurt you. Lay your hand on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. These works shall ye do in greater works. Anybody who believes on me, these works shall ye do in greater works. And I'm not changing John 14, 12 for nobody's doctrinal opinions. Because people don't want that on them. All of a sudden, that's going to demand a responsibility. It's going to demand that they press in. It's going to demand that they examine themselves and say, Wait a minute, I'm coming up short of that which God has provided. But what's wrong with that? That should get you hungry and thirsty. That should get you into an intimacy. That should get you into a laying a hold on the things of the Spirit. Laying hold on the things of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Prutoshi. Prutoshiya tusha. Prutoshiya namake. Now, Father, I ask you to let your fire burn in this place. Father, I ask you to let your fire burn in this place. I ask you, Father, to cause the anointing of your presence and the working of your mighty spirit to be on a level that no sneaking around, no lying, no cheating, nothing can go on that isn't fully revealed and manifested. Father, I ask you to put your protection and your hand of grace upon everybody in this place. Oh, Lord, that the spirit of holiness will overwhelm them, overtake them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, it's very hard for me to get past first phrase in a verse, but I'm going to do my very best. <laughs> Be glad, then, you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord. Verse 24, and the, and the floors shall be full of wheat. He's talking about a harvest. He's talking about natural events that with respect to how the prophet was seeing things at the time in the midst of the famine because of disobedience. And now he's prophesying about the blessing of God when the God's people begin to cooperate with them. And he immediately goes right over into the events of this day and time that we live in when the Redeemer came, when, when, the, when the Deliverer rose up in Zion, speaking of Jesus Christ. And now he's talking about the harvest that should be in our life. And he's not just talking about the harvest of souls. He's talking about the harvest of the fruits of the Spirit that now are brought in because we give ourselves over to sowing to the Spirit and reaping everlasting life. He's talking about the richness and the increase of our own personal growth and maturity spiritually. My goodness, if we would understand there's something far better than the material riches that are around us, that there are spiritual riches, all of a sudden we would throw on the brakes and start looking for another different, another way, a different kind of thinking would, ta would take a hold of us and we'd all understand how to walk into the door that every single person must walk into if they want to walk with Jesus, with the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's only going to be possible because you, you are interacting with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> He's 
He isn't promoting evil, evil thoughts and evil thinking. People running around saying, oh, I just have the flesh nature. You keep acknowledging that, and that's all you're going to ever have. Because that's not faith. That's the same thing as walking around and saying, I'm sick, and I'm always going to be sick, and there's nothing I can do about it. God's given you the divine nature, and he said, let your faith be effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing in you. He said that with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Man doesn't. Man's turned it around. Today, we have so much false doctrine. Men are believing the under unrighteousness. They're all talking about their flesh nature. Oh, and you know what? Everybody I see talking about that has got some serious problems with it, too. I'm talking about the nature of the Spirit. I'm talking about the nature of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the new nature, the new creation, the one that I got and that you're supposed to have gotten when we were born again and we were washed with the water of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost because that's what it means to be delivered. That's what Paul said, Titus 3, 5. That's what he said. I'm going to go with what God said. You can go with Christian philosophy if you want, but you won't like hanging around me. You know, because I'm going to provoke you. I'm going to point fingers at you and make fun at you. I'm going to point fingers and laugh. Amen. Look at that person. They're a false witness. That's what I'm going to do. And, I, and I'm, going to be, I'm going to be encouraged by the Lord to do that. Amen. Until shame overtakes you and you repent. Hallelujah. Somebody saw, oh, he's just teasing. He's not really going to do it. Oh, I'm doing it now. <laughs> Verse 25. And I will restore to you. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. I'm going to save your soul from hell. I'm going, to, I'm going to prevent you from being a false witness. And more than that, the zeal of the Lord has eaten me up because I love to bring glory and honor to him. I'm tired of seeing people bring shame to him. I'm tired of seeing people come into the kingdom. And as soon as they come into the kingdom, there's people around them that come around them that are almost like demonic assignments that ultimately turn their hearts away from the Lord. I'm telling you, I'm getting ferocious. I'm going to start looking like one of these guys that Joel described in the army who's got a face like a lion. Rawr. <laughs> and run like a horse. Amen. The swiftness of moving in the spirit. The accuracy of moving in the boldness, the ferociousness of it. Hallelujah. Somebody said that isn't love. Oh, yes, it is. To redeem people from sin, to protect the innocent. I'm telling you right now, that is love. To stop the oppressor, to stop the thief and the liar. Oh, that's love. That's the greatest kind of love. And it works every time around your house. And that's what you're going to do when you're protecting your stuff and your kids. And then all of a sudden, God raises up a shepherd after his own heart. And starts acting like a father in the house. And everybody goes, foul, controlling. That's just the devil talking. That's just the lying spirits. Because that would never be so in your house. You're going to, hallelujah. You see something creeping around, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When my daughters were born, I didn't need to get a shotgun. I got the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I best put the fire of God on the thing in Jesus' name. Amen. It'll prove itself right or wrong. It will, whatever. It's going to prove itself right or wrong in your life. <clears throat> That's what Father's doing. <coughs> recently <coughs> Pastor Ruth had a, and I want you to understand that Ruth Ann is a pastor in this ministry Elizabeth and I and so is Daniel and Joshua and I'm so blessed uh, that I have my children to pastor with me and there, it's no different in dealing with them is no different than dealing with me as far as the Lord is concerned because it's pastoral ministry you need to understand that you know, the reproaches wherewith they have reproached him has fallen on me. And that gets hard. And I, you know, I, I, it, it, I've tried to protect my kids because I know how difficult it is to be in pastoral ministries because everybody's got some opinion to express. But you know what? You're, you you understand. Your opinions were expressed to Jesus. It didn't fall on me. It didn't fall on us. And we want God's people to understand it because it's a, much, it's a very important, critical part of revival and participating with the Holy Ghost because you can't violate things of the Spirit. You can't offend the Holy Ghost. You can't reproach God and, stand, and have an intimate relationship with Him until you repent and get it right. Is that true? It's true. And I'm, just, and I'm just so blessed. I mean, I know my daughters came to me and said, Dad, it's just too hard. You don't understand. We have to take, the, we have to take sometimes we have to take uh, stuff from people's parents. It's just too hard. I said, you're going to be fine because you're going to grow from it. You're going to grow from it. Father's going to take care of them. 
And then when he, and, and when he stirs me up, I'm going to go take care of him. <laughs> I'm going to go let him know. You know, I, I wait on the Lord. I don't just jump in. I wait on, Papa tells me to go do something. You know what? Father wants to speak to you. I was so blessed when people come up to me and they say, do you see anything in my life? Is there anything that, that the Lord showed you about my life? Because if you stay that way, you'll always be right. And, you know, most of the time when people do that, I never have anything to say. It's the people who don't do that that I have a whole lot to say to. Huh? It's true. And, and by and large, the Lord just has a speak in a gen, in gen, just in a general way so that everyone can hear and everyone can respond to him because he wants to develop you personally. I can't go around the world with you. You know, the Lord wants to send you around the world. Amen. Hallelujah. It'd be redundant if I had to hold your hand go with you. God the Holy Ghost wants to hold your hand and go with you. He wants to train you personally. All I'm supposed to be is an overseer. All I'm supposed to be is the guy when you can't hear to come to you, come to you and say, Hey, you can't hear. <laughs> and then when God takes it to that level, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a rebel, all of a sudden it's going to push a button that's going to send you across the line, the wrong side of the line. And that's what happens. God gives people a lifetime to repent and get it right. He does. And the best thing to do and the safest thing to do is just walk in loneliness and meekness. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the scripture says, Peter said, if you, if you, if you uh, do right and suffer wrongfully. And he's just talking about the leadership. You did it, you know, uh, they uh, did it handle you properly. You did right and the leadership got a hold of you. He doesn't say, now it's all right for you to have a bad attitude. Did you notice that? That it didn't say that? How many of you noticed that that's not what the Bible said? What the Bible said, and you take it patiently, then you do, what did he say? Now you're doing what's right. Now you got it. Now you, now you got it. Now, you're, now you got it. Wow. Well, we, people don't want, people want me to just talk about Joel's army and want me to talk about doing warfare in the spiritual realm. They don't want me to get practical here. They don't want me to get down in their space and say, uh-uh, can't do that. Can't bring that in here. Huh? I know um, certain um, Orthodox Jews um, that they'll stand on the block in their town, whether it's over in Israel or Williams, New York or Williamsburg or wherever, and they'll stand on the block and they'll just watch you to see what you're doing, see what you're carrying. If you're carrying anything and you've got a bag or something and they don't know you, they're going to say, I want to look at the bag. And these are big old boys. And they get to look at the bag because they don't want anybody pushing drugs around their neighborhood. I don't want anybody bringing anything wrong around the neighborhood. And then, if you try to come into the synagogue, ha, 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 you don't look right. You're not coming in. You could pass. Uh. You'd probably give out. You put a yarmulke on, then nobody's going to say anything. I, I, I'm sure. Huh? And then you might get a greeting like, bro, Hashem, and then see if you get a response. But it's okay. You can still pass without even saying anything. Just go, oh. Huh? But they're going to be looking at you because there's, there's, you're just not going to be allowed in. There, there is a culture within them that you don't bring unholy things. You don't bring unclean things around the presence of God. Even though they're totally off and they got it totally wrong, they're totally zealous. Well, how about you and me on a personal basis now that we got the real thing? They don't have anything and they're doing it all. We got the real thing and we're sitting, you know, on the dead end. <laughs> you with me? Hallelujah. Come on, say no more. I'm not going to be on my dead end anymore. Amen. I'm going to get the li living part into the thing. Hallelujah. And we say, wait a minute. We're the holy people of God. We're not allowing those thoughts in. We're the holy people of God. We're not allowing that uncleanness in. We're the holy people of God. We're not going to sit here and commune with demon spirits. We're the holy people of God. We're not going to commit sacrilege and profane his name. We're the holy people of God. We're going to understand the reverence of approaching unto his throne. The church isn't just some natural, normal thing to us. It's a place where we come into a realm of the heavenlies, where there's innumerable company of angels, where Almighty God is there, Christ Jesus mediator of the new covenant our eyes have been opened see God wants to mature you father wants you to show you what you need to be fearing trembling about that you're allowed to even be identified as a member in the body of Christ and the responsibilities therewith hallelujah and he's going to hold you responsible for how you responded to those he sent to perfect you he's going to hold you responsible and if you don't think that's true, I just encourage you to continue to read the Bible. Because you will have no, you will have need of no one to tell you the Word of God's going to stand up and look at you and point its finger right in your face and say, you the man or woman. Huh? Just keep reading the Word. 
I believe it's one of the greatest things that you can possibly do is to develop a, a habit, a lifestyle of reading the Word. If I could get you, I mean, honestly, I read the Bible like 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the morning and 10 chapters are done in 15, 20 minutes just to keep this pace, this easy pace, you know, right? Come on, right? Come on. Come on, I know some of you haven't read the Bible very much, and so it's a real slow pace because you're, uh, you're wrestling with the these and thous. We'll read it in the NIV. I mean, the next time read it in the King James, and, and then the next time after that re, re, read in the you know, revised English version, and what after that? I mean, whatever. You know, come on, just get with the program. Because what's going to happen is you give yourself to reading the Word. What's going to happen is the Holy Spirit is going to speak directly to you from the Word, and He's going to point out in your life the things that are wrong, the things that need to change. God will bring a wash of the water of his word into your life that will be the floodgates of heaven opened up upon your soul open up upon your being that will bring absolute change and correction you'll begin to mature you won't stay babyhood in babyhood anymore no one likes to be taught said they're a baby but the reality of it is that people get stuck in a religious way and they don't mature in the things of the spirit it's God's opened up the opportunity for us to mature. What's happened is we've got a culture and a movement that is really designed to keep everybody in babyhood in the things of the Spirit. That is in the way God set it up in the church. In the first century church, in the early church, what was going on is you've got people that are fully matured in the things of the Spirit and purpose to obey God and go all the way, even if it meant their life. What you've got is maturation and growth continually. And now that is the culture. It's defining a wide open uh, place and uh, opportunity for everybody, unlimited opportunity for everybody to step into. And that's why, the, the, you know, Mark says, well, Whoever believes does all this stuff. These signs to follow them believe. Because that's just what's going on with all the believers. All the believers are doing this. All the believers have authority over devils. Huh? We're just having, we're trying to have authority over our bad attitudes. Well, I just felt terrible. I didn't come to the meeting tonight because I just felt terrible. I didn't come to the meeting because I felt terrible and I, felt, I figured that you were just going to holler and scream at me. You figured right. Very good, very good. Yeah, I'm going to holler and scream at you for, you know, being a false witness. And for allowing the devil to run over top of you like that. Well, if you would speak mildly and gently, I, I would respond better. Oh, you would? Oh, well, I'll do that then. I'll try that for a couple of months. See if that changes anything. In fact, if it is, I have tried that. And Father did. And the reality of it is, Father always speaks very sternly. And he didn't say speak mildly and gently. He said, take with all authority, speak mildly and gently. Be very concerned about, don't hurt their feelings. Did you notice that verse of Scripture? No, it said just the opposite. With all authority, rebuke, reprove, correct. Well, what's that going to do? That's going to sort out rebellion real quick. That's going to sort out a wrong spirit. See what happens. I, you know, I've told this, and I'm going to say this because it's very important. When somebody goes around talking bad about you, don't worry about it. The only people that are going to believe it who are, are people who already have a bad attitude towards you. Because God will always make a space... For people to fulfill their wickedness. He will always make a room. So if somebody goes around talking bad about you. The people who've got an honest and true, true, sincere heart. Who really love you. Who really have the love of the spirit. They're not going to believe any, any of it anyways. You don't have to worry about nothing. The people who are already got a wrong heart. They already participate with strife. They're the ones that are going to come and fill that space. Because God's going to always provide a place. For people to be manifested in their wickedness. Or to be manifested in their righteousness. He sorts it out all the time. People are concerned about somebody going and, 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 and spreading slander. Don't worry about it. The people that it would affect are the people who are already under the spirit of it anyways. They already feel that way about you before they ever heard any other thing else. That's the way it is. It's a spiritual law. I want to get these things across to you because I want you to understand how to gird up the loins of your mind. I want you to understand how to have your belt on and your light burning. I want you to understand the responsibility that you have to give an account to the Lord. How that He holds us responsible for love and the way we behave and the way we talk about people and the way that we treat people. Relationships is more important to God than anything else. It's 99% of everything He's holding us responsible to do. And maybe it's 100%. Because it really fundamentally comes down about first and foremost relationship with him, then relationship in various different levels. If you're married, relationship of husband and wife. If you're not married, your relationship with your parents. 
And I'm telling you, honoring your parents in the context of them serving the Lord. If your parents aren't serving the Lord, look, I mean, you honor them in every way that you can. But you don't honor them to the point of leaving, them, uh, leaving church and not following Jesus anymore. Because at that point, he says, you gotta, it's got to be as hate compared to the love that you have for me. Otherwise, you're not worthy of me. I mean, there's things that there's boundaries and places and, you know, uh, 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 that we don't cross over that need to be established in our heart. So I want to go back here to this verse of Scripture and, uh, and, and grab a hold of verse 25. He says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God hath dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And, 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 and my people shall never be ashamed. And here it goes. Now he's going to take it. He's going to shift gears. He's going to shift gears. He's taking that which is going on in their life, the devastation that is going on in their life, the, 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 the shame that is going on in their life because of their disobedience, the famine that is going on in their life, the things that have destroyed their life and eaten up all the blessings of God from their life. And he's going to make a shift and he's saying, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pour out my spirit. It shall come to pass afterwards. This is what's happening right now. See, we know this is happening right now because it is the Pentecostal message. It is the message that God delivered through his servant Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, it shall come to pass, saith God, that I pour out my spirit in the last days. Here we are. These are the last days. We're in them. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. I'm telling you right now, today our redemption draweth nigh, and it is closer today than it was than, and than the moment that we believe. Read Peter. Read the things that Peter said. He thought he was going up. He thought he was go- Christ Jesus was coming in his day. Read the things that, John, that, uh, that Paul wrote. He thought that Christ Jesus was coming in his day. Huh? Because there's an urgency. Huh? And we don't know when he's coming. We just prepared always for his coming. But Father's got something he wants to happen in this earth. He wants his gospel to be preached the way he preached it. He wants this gospel of the kingdom to preach, to be preached to, as a witness to all the nations of the earth. Then shall the end come. And so I just want to read to you real quickly about this army. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's how available the Holy Spirit is. Church. Ha. Huh? Yes. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Yes. Ha. How, how easy is it to prophesy? Uh, you want to go preach about how he's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And you're going to have to first foremost be a partaker of this wonderful fruit of his grace. He doesn't pour out his spirit upon us because we're righteous and because we're holy and because we deserve it. He pours out his spirit because it is his plan and the goodness of his heart and the mercy and the grace that he has given to us. He's given everyone the opportunity to have a taste of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flows out real easy. Now, if you give yourself to prophecy, so prophecy will throw, flow out just as easily. Hallelujah. But you know what you're going to have to do? Is you're going to have to stop your mouth from speaking curses and lies and slanders. Because that will violate the access that the Holy Ghost has to your tongue. For sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same fountain. It is a spiritual law. You're going to have to make a decision what you're going to participate with. And every, I'm going to tell you, People don't realize it, but you're always making choices now that will affect you in the future. And when things get really bad for you, you come under pressure, people usually make bad choices. And guess what happens with making bad choices? It gets really worse. That's what happens. You make bad choices in a relationship, and those relationships get worse. Under pressure, you make good choices, meaning you're going to do it what God, the way God said to do it. You're going to love. You're going to honor. You're going to bless. And what's going to happen is it's going to get great. It's going to be wonderful. Father's going to fix it all because you obey a law of the Spirit, and God works a miracle. You disobey a law, a law, the laws of the Spirit, and God works no miracles. You're on your own. And unfortunately, you're not because Satan will invade your life. There's only one place of protection, dear people. Come on into the ark of safety. Satan hates you. He wants to destroy you. Look around. Isn't it evidence enough? I'm telling you right now, CNN 
Fox News, retro television, all the rest of those retro news and all those other things that are going on. They are just slanderous, deceiving lies. They are there to manipulate you, to spin doctor you. They make every, they make, they make the news, really. They're not reporting their news. They're making the news. Huh? You better watch out. Everywhere you turn, there is deceiving, lying things trying to influence you to do the opposite of what God has purposed and empowered you and I to function in. And we're going to have to get ourselves some wisdom. People say, well, I would love to move into the anointing that uh, Wigglesworth moved into. Yeah, I'm sure you would. The question is, are you willing to pay the price he paid? See, that's the big question. Are you willing? He, Wigglesworth read nothing but the Bible. He said, I've never prayed for more than 15 minutes, but I've never went 15 minutes without praying. He had a relationship with God that was clearly definable as having, coming out, having come out from the world. I mean, I always thought it was wonderful when I saw people wanting to do healing rooms after John G. Lake. I said, I was praying, go all the way. Go all the way. Do what John G. Lake did because he came out from among them. He was separate. It was a radical commitment to holiness and purity, and that's why he had the results that he had in the healing rooms that he did in Seattle, Washington, and that he did it. They said why he had the results that he had in South Africa. But what happens is people want to have the beauty and the splendor of those things that belong to the realms of heaven in signs and wonders and miracles, but they don't want to have the consecration that is essential for that kind of display of power to be revealed through their life, that kind of display of authority. Hallelujah. That kind of display of faith. There is a realm of faith that is available right here, right now. You can have it. There was a realm. I felt a wonderful realm of faith at the end of the meeting this morning. It's a gift of faith. It is a realm of living in supernatural ability to have and call and speak forth things in God. Hallelujah. You want that, but there is a price to pay. Because with every... It, there. there with the authority and with the anointing, there is a consecration. There has never been an anointing in anywhere in the Bible without a consecration. Never. You're separated unto God, consecrated unto God so that the holy oil can come on you, which represents the rubbings of God. Hallelujah. The movings of God, huh? Hey, come on, think about it. Father wants to come and just start massaging you with the oil of the Spirit. He wants to start, come move on you, start rubbing deeply within your spirit, his nature, his ways, what he feels, what he thinks. And then you get up from that place of ecstasy, having been overwhelmed with his joy, and suddenly there's an authority in your life that wasn't there before. There's a revelation and knowledge of him and access into a heavenly realm that didn't exist before. Where there once was intimidation and fear and awkwardness, now there's boldness and fierceness and authority. We want that, people. You want that. Satan's been lying and cheating and stealing. He's been, th he's been trying to make people, and doing a very good job of it, by the way, believe that really living is doing his trash can stuff. Living in his garbage can, r living off of his filth, drinking his, his, his poison. Huh? Are you listening to me? All the while, Father had a life called abundant life for you. And people had to find that and relegate it to be in a realm of religion. And all they understood was what people were doing over there in the realm of religion. Because there wasn't the examples of the divine attributes of heaven being manifested through our lives as this should have been. The joy. They walked into the room and it was like, is this funeral? I thought it was going to. No, too many times. Walk into the room. It's like a funeral parlor. Everybody. They're all sitting quiet. And you think, well, what's happening now? You're looking for the pallbearers. I didn't notice. I, no one told me there was coming. No, people, the, the Pentecostal movement is the place where there is the thunderings of heaven, where there's the rushing mighty wind, where there's the clothing tongues of fire, where there's the gushing force of his praise, where there's the staggering, overwhelming re re responses of each human being, now overwhelmed by the very divine power and grip God. Come on. You stay in the grip of God. Hallelujah. Not proksara bekila hapatai. Ruth Anna had, Pastor Ruth had a dream not too long ago. She shared it on Wednesday night. And it's such a true dream where there came down in the midst of the church a pillar of fire. 
and the pillar of fire began to move down the, 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 the rows and, and, and a tongue of fire came out and licked up people into the fire who, who weren't willing to respond to God, who wanted just to just pose and wanted to have it their way. Father hasn't brought us into the kingdom to have it our way. We're, we're, we've come to be taught of God so to have it His way, to do His will. Hallelujah. Praise God. That should be an exciting thing. Everybody should be shouting to the top of the lungs right now instead of seeing, feeling like they're being, you know, reprimanded. It's like, oh, my. I get to be taught of God. Yeah, you get to be taught of God. And how's he going to do it? He poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And what happens when he pours out his spirit upon all flesh? He says that your daughter should prophesy. When I had daughters, I said, Father, I thank you that my daughters will prophesy. I'm telling you right now, I didn't just say a little bit. I grabbed a hold of them when they were babies. I walked around with them every single day crying out to God. Father, your will, your way, your glory, your manifest power. I want nothing to do with this world. I want nothing to do with the ranks of Satan and demon spirits. Let my, let, let my children be your people. Father, Philip had four daughters that prophesied, Lord, I want to have at least two. Amen. And you get determined. You, you become determined in God concerning these things. And if you're not, then I'm going to tell you what happens. Uh, there is a void. There is a defenselessness. Uh, and Satan is going to come. And he's going to be ruthless. He don't ask permission. He grabs you by the nap of the neck he jerks you around by your hair he kicks you into his stuff and makes you waller in his filth and say hey you having a good time now and you go yeah because he hits you with his deception oh yeah i'm having, having a great time and you little waller in your pain and your misery and your hurt and your sickness and your disease huh i'm having a great time <laughs> hit me again i'm still breathing you got anything else to numb me with? Huh? Are you listening to me? Man, I tell you, I hate the devil. I am at war against him. I hate his iniquity and his sins and his lies and his abuse of people. I hate to see snakes creeping around, wolves sneaking about. Huh? People giving over to perdition. I'm telling you, watch out. You watch out. There's people hanging around church giving over to perdition. And the bigger the church is, the more perditious folks you're going to have around. You better be careful what you're listening to, what you're hearing, what examples you're going with. Huh? Just because a person's got a Bible underneath, tucked underneath their arm, don't mean that they're an ambassador of Christ. Better watch out. Could be just a snare laid. Look. Don't listen to anybody and don't follow anyone until you see them established in the church, established in the things of the Spirit. Amen. In love with Jesus so much so that they're not thinking about possibly turning away from him. I wouldn't leave him for nothing. Come on, man. He my yashad up all your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, he says, he says that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You can have that. How many of you want that? I got it. I, I have that. Praise God. I have that. I have that in my house. And I have that among those in the church that will listen to me. Amen. That will be sons and daughters. Because that's what Papa said. That's the way it's going to go down. Praise God. Those of you who are still not certain who you belong to, that's a problem. You got yourself a problem. If you're sure, not certain what company you are of, you got yourself a problem. Amen. Because the church is a company. The body of Christ. My goodness. You're not sure if this little finger belongs to you yet. I'm not sure. The little finger's going, I'm not sure what body I belong to yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My geek out of you might as well go ahead and get you might as well go ahead and get set into the body of Christ. You might as well Hallelujah. You might as well go ahead and stop being your own person, and lose your life. Hallelujah. You might as well go ahead and say, I want to go all the way with you, Father. I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit you know, trying to be it, do it on my own, be it on my own, or whatever, you know. Look, it's just too easy to have this. It's too, you'd miss out on too much. It's just, just have this. Have that, I'll tell you. Ha. Hallelujah. Have a joy and a shout and a praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Ha. And then he says, he says this. He says that your old men should dream dreams. And, you know, the thing about it is, it's not just for old men dreaming dreams. Men. But old men can dream dreams. Huh? Because young men dream dreams. I dream dreams. And I'm not an old man yet. And, and, and young women dream dreams that are from the Lord. That, hallelujah. Solomon was a young man when he dreamed the dream that you read about today. Right? Or you got ahead before today because you didn't have time today. Don't do that. Because you, you need to have the Word of God every day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's okay if you only was able to read half of what you were responsible to read today because you were on the run. Okay? But you still got tonight when you get home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You sit down and you come in and see say, well, why is it that I have such terrible dreams? Because you're watching and participating with such terrible things. Stop watching and participating with such terrible dream things, and you'll stop having such terrible dreams. Huh? Start watching and participating with wonderful things, hallelujah, the things of the Spirit, and you'll start having wonderful dreams. Amen. Father, come and visit you. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. And he says, your young men shall see visions. Now, these, are, these things are available for you. You won't get over a vision. When, you're, when you have a vision, when you have an, that kind of an encounter with God, it is, stays with you for the rest of your days. Hallelujah. It's a milestone in your life. It's a spiritual marker. Hallelujah. In your life. Listen, these things are available for you. You don't have to go without them. You can just begin to covet spiritual things. God wants you to covet the spiritual. That's what he says. He says, my goodness, I am just, I just don't want to have to live another year without having a heavenly encounter with you. Without having a vision or dreaming a dream. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I want to dream myself a dream. <laughs> oh, God, right out of the realms of heaven. I want to touch that, that, that blessed uh, grace that you have provided in the Holy Ghost so that I can participate with the hastening of your coming so that I can participate with the restoration of all things. Hallelujah. So that I can participate being a member in the body of Christ and part of this ferocious army that's running everywhere, subduing all things for the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And also upon your servants and upon your handmaiden in those days. See, this is a radical thing because it, if for you to have this primarily, you are a very special person. You were either a prophet that God anointed as a prophet and there were a few of them, or you were a priest. And now God, he says, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that there's neither going to be male nor female in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That everybody, Gentile and Jew, are equivalent. I mean, what a blessing. He made all that realms of his divine glory available to whoever's just desperate for it and willing to be committed to it and faithful. And no power of hell going to keep me from doing Papa's will. I've been standing here for 33 years, and I will continue to shout to the mountain. I, I, I'll do faithfully those things which God has given me to do. And people think that they can just live flippantly with God and they can get away with it. I'm telling you, when you begin to love Jesus Christ and really love him, you'll be as faithful to him, more faithful to him than anything else. You will be. You will be. Because it's faithfulness and obedience that actually is the expression of love that he has defined. Amen. Amen. Hanglose, Hangalohatea, Mayanese to Kuro Sutan, Besakami Ikiki and Akushta. La Manto. Yeah, now, Amy, that's just the moving of the Holy Ghost. That's the impartation of spiritual gifts. Somebody said, well, where, did I, where did you get this? Sitting in the meeting? <laughs> Were you just sitting there? No, I was, I was being raptured there. I was being overtaken there. I was hungry. I was touching something there. And all of a sudden, I found myself different. I found myself changed. That's what happens to us. We change. We have these encounters with God. We go from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. It's glory upon glory. It's grace upon grace. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this work of grace. He says, I will show. He said, I'll show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillar of smoke. He said, the sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and, in, and the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now I want you to understand that that deliverance came out of Jerusalem and it came out of Zion because that's where Jesus Christ himself was crucified at Calvary's cross. That's where he was buried and he rose from the dead. And right there at the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, he is Ascended up to the throne to now be uh, ultimately be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to be exalted above every power and authority. Now that's where you and I come in. That's where you and I come in. And I want you to go now and look at a verse of scripture with me in Acts chapter three. And I want you to grab a hold of this because people, we are calling you to come and participate with what God is doing so that we might hasten the day, so that we might speed up the day, so that we might be those found in God, found in Christ Jesus, flowing and functioning in that which he gave up to the church and has made, uh, has a purpose, should be fully revealed in our and through our lives. And if we're not willing to participate, well, then where do we stand? If we want to have it our own way and do our religion. In Jesus' name, I pray that you won't want that stuff. The Pentecostal movement is barely even visible in the earth because the Pentecostal movement has been taken over by a bunch of hyper religion. The only little Holy Ghost shake they got is every once in a while when there's, you know, when they come under somebody else's anointing. Huh? They live oppressed, defeated, sick, diseased. Huh? They can't rise up from their spiritual uh, lethargy. Huh? They can't move forward in maturity. They're stuck in a ditch, which is a grave with the ends kicked out. Is that true? True, it is true. So what are we saying? We say, what are we saying? Are we just basically telling everybody, you know what, you're just hopeless? No, we're saying change. We're saying change. Somebody said, I, I got what I, I have. I don't need anybody else's witness. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. That's, God said it out that you needed, you needed the witness of the church. You needed the witness of the Spirit. You needed the witness of those who he's placed over you. That's what he says. Huh? You should hear what different people say to me. Concerning different ones. Say, you know, they point out, well, what's going on over here? Well, what's, why, why is there, what's that happening over there? Because we can see it. And well, can you talk to them? I can't talk to them. Not yet. Because the Lord's given them a space of time to repent. We talk to them. Now they're gone. You know? And I don't want to say that and believe that for anybody that's here tonight. But there have been people that have been in this place. You know, they were just constantly living on dead. They were just ready at any moment as soon as any correction came down on them they were going to hit the door and God just gave them space and time you need to get this right we're going to get this right we're going to put everything God does this he's so loving so merciful he puts everything on hold to reach us individually okay I'm just going to put everything on hold yeah we could have a great revival we could shake nations but right now we're just going to try to deal with your attitude isn't it amazing we're going to try to help you understand you're not going to be able to live like this and be right with me Oh, Rosara de Preteo. Loro Sicarna Prete. Lo Sevredesi. Oco Sevreneshi. One of the things that I'm going to do by the help and the grace of God is I'm going to outline spiritual laws. Because people are constantly violating spiritual laws. And you can't violate spiritual laws and flow in the Holy Ghost. And if you don't know what spiritual laws are, you violate them right and left. And somebody tries to talk to you, huh? We right now actually, I'm dealing with I'm dealing with some people's problems right now that are keeping them from moving forward in God. And reality of it is, it's easy to deal with these issues if you're hungry to move forward. If you're just playing pretend, and pretend is I'm going to do it my way. In the end of the day, I want God, but I'm going to do it my way, no matter what you say. Because I've got this reason and that reason and the other reason. And by the way, I really love Jesus. Yeah, sure. 
So do the Mormons. And so do a whole bunch of other folks. Real love Jesus. And what makes you any different? Prove that you're any different. You have to prove it that you're any different. Hey? Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God is the same wherever He is manifested. It isn't a different Spirit of God. The Spirit of God always does exactly in one person that he does in the other. He produces the same kind of fruit, same kind of attitude, same kind of faithfulness, same kind of commitment, same kind of love, same kind of joy, same kind of truth, same kind of peace. He's not a whole bunch of different manifestations of a different Holy Spirit. <laughs> so this makes it pretty easy, doesn't it? Amen. Now, I feel something in the Spirit. I want to break it. I'm, I want to break the thing off of some people. I can feel it. I want to be able to go on and deliver the things that the Lord has given to me. But right now, I to just it's a demon power. And there's, there's a couple of people that I could actually call out right now and tell you, you are under a demon power. And it manifests itself in sickness and disease, and it ma manifests itself in rebellion, and it manifests itself in deep hurt. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, I want the thing to be broken. God wants it to be broken. Why hang on to it? Why sit there and say, oh, he's talking about me again? Oh, the whole meeting just directed me. Look, listen. Yeah, it is. It's directed to you. Absolutely. Isn't God merciful and so loving that he would stop the whole meeting and direct it to you? Isn't that amazing? And now you're going to be offended about it. Amazing. Amazing. Right? Because that's what a spirit of offense does. It's a demon spirit. Spirit of offense is a demon spirit. It occupies a person's life. It oppresses them with all sorts and manner of things. Any, any, any manifestation of fear is a manifestation of a demon spirit. I have power to break it. I have authority to break it. There's people in this church right now who once lived under a spirit of fear. And the Lord used me to break that completely off of them. But I'm telling you right now, if you're not hooked up and submitted to what God's doing in my life, and I could do, you know what? If you're not hooked up and submitted, if Jesus was the minister here and you're not hooked up and submitted to him, no matter, he's got unlimited power, no matter what, you wouldn't receive anything from him. You know, you would have just as much of a problem and be just as offended by Jesus' ministry as you are by anyone else's. And it's proven. Because people, there are certain states and natures and conditions and dispositions. If you, take atten if you pay attention, you'll see them all manifested in the word of God. And the more you read the word, the more it just stands out to you. And it gets where, it, it gets where it's pretty intense. Oh, there's that thing. There's that spirit. And, it's being, and you'll see it being manifest, whether it's that, you know, that rebellion and that pride that was being manifested in Absalom or wherever you want to go or that insolence and rebellion that was manifested in Korah and Dathan. And, you know, you'll, you'll, see these, you'll see these things in the Word, and then ultimately you're able to that much more recognize them when they operate around you. See, right now, where I'm at right now is I want to deal with something that literally is the casting out of devils. I want to I, I move in deliverance right now for a couple of different people. And the, the Lord is... And, and the Lord is just, you know, moving me cautiously in how I do it. Because I can sense that there is not a desperation within those who need this deliverance to be delivered. Because there is a domination of a religious spirit. It's true. When you've been rubbing up against a religious spirit all your life and didn't know it, you're going to be impacted by it. When you've actually followed and been molded by a religious spirit, you'll have it and won't know it. You'll be blinded to it. Everybody, anybody else in the spirit can see it, but you won't be able to see it. It's pretty hectic, isn't it? And if you're going, is it me? Lord, I don't want that in my life. Then it's not you. But if you're going, I know he's talking about me and I disagree with it. Yeah, then it's you. It's you. It's you. Because that's what a religious spirit would do. It resists the anointing. It resists being instructed and corrected. So right now, if you're wide up and going, hey, man, I don't want that in my life. Oh, come minister to me. You're good. 
Father, I thank you that your fire will burn in this place. And there will be nothing that will be able to resist it. That your truth, your truth, your anointing will move in the midst of your church. Listen, dear people, Father, we got to think about what he's got to work with. When we reading, when we reading Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, huh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, I mean, Judges, Joshua, Judges, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles. We're going, my goodness, this is what you got to work with? You know, you just, get, you just basically get worn out with all the backsliding and rebellion, rebelling. Huh? You just get worn out. It's like, okay, let's get into the prophets now. Come on. I'm ready for the prophets. I got to get refreshed. I need to get on the side of somebody that's rebuking all this nonsense. Amen. Huh? Father needs the people that are going to be sold out to him. That are going to do it his way. That are going to be willing to step in to the realms of the divine power. To live in divine health. To walk in a divine glory. To be faithful in the things that he gives us to do. To be a light unto, uh, a light unto the nations of this earth. Hallelujah. Not to violate things in the spirit. But to live in the spirit. To walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be led by the Holy Ghost. What a lifestyle. Hallelujah. What a lifestyle. What a lifestyle. What a lifestyle. What a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you to do it right now. I ask you to do it right now. I ask you to let your fire burn right now. This lying thing. I ask you to break the yoke of it right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 You know, what Father wants to be able to do with us is He wants to bring forth the expressions of heaven that has never been heard in the earth. He wants to bring forth the beauty of praise that no one's ever seen. He wants to bring forth the beauty of joy and rejoicing. I mean, we, I, we can go back and look at so many different moves of God where people just sat down at the piano. And, and they just started, they never played before. They sat down at the piano, an anointing came upon them to play. And the most beautiful sounds of heaven came rolling out. Hallelujah. The Rosatarane, people, people who had never, uh, ever even uh, had an encounter with God up into that moment in time. Suddenly, they, they're sitting in church and the, and the heavens are open before them. They have an encounter, a heavenly vision. Suddenly, they're filled with miracles and, and gifts of healing right there in the meeting. That's Pentecost. That's Pentecost. That is a place where we're all gathered together in one place, hungry, waiting. The Lord says, go wait till you do this power from on high. We live, in a, we live in a realm where we're continually being filled. And so because we live in a realm where we're continually being filled, by the time we get to the meeting, my goodness, the level of expectation is you know, it's about to explode. It, begins, it starts sounding like what, we, what, what, what I was hearing when it came in the building tonight and everybody was gathered in here praying, all the different people that were gathered in here praying. There's a level of expectation. There's a place of laying hold of these wonderful things in the realms of the kingdom of God. Now, you know, here's the biggest problem. The biggest problem is there is an adversary standing against us to resist the anointing. And Father's telling us there's only one way that we're going to be effective against this. If I would have take, it, take you and spend some time just looking at Joel chapter 9, and, uh, forgive me, Joel chapter 2 and looking at the army, and taking you to Revelation chapter 19 and looking at the army, and then taking you to Revelation chapter 20 and looking at the army, I could give you a picture of really what's supposed to be going on in the dynamics of the Spirit right now. You begin to see 
what it is, how we're supposed to be executing his judgment and his righteousness against all sin and iniquity in a spiritual realm right now. Casting down every power of darkness, casting out every demon spirit, treading upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, which is not even possible until you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost and begin to flow and function in him. And all of a sudden he begins to change every dynamic about the way you act. Every dynamic of, of your life and your nature begins to exist the very life and nature of Jesus Christ. If there's any message that we right now, God's people, here's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. If there's any message that there's going to begin to be preached by those whom the Lord has raised, raised up and is raising up is for people to receive the life of Jesus Christ. A life that can only be lived by the living in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, being overwhelmed, taken control of by the Holy Ghost, where gushings of the heavenly glory flow out of your innermost being. Hallelujah. Mambrang Jesu Taranaya, just an entrance into it. Just a labora, just an entrance in it. The Baranase. Tonight, all nine guests of the Spirit that we read about in uh, Galatians. Is available at this very moment that we read about, forgive me, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, is available right now. I'm expecting to actually function in all nine gifts of the Spirit. Actually, uh, we, I've already been functioning in at least four of them. Tonight, I want to cast out devils, I want to work miracles. Tonight, I'm going to go, I'm going to go at it. There's so many people that need deliverance. Yeah. Now, all the older men in God told me, he said, you could never cast out a religious spirit. They have to leave on their own. And, you know, I've heard it all my life from a lot of different men. You've heard that most of your life, too. Can't cast out a religious spirit. It's such a stronghold of delusion. It's a spiritual delusion. It's just like I was telling you as I was reading last night how that the uh, homosexual movement called lesbians gays, bisexuals, and transvestites believe that they are the eunuchs of the Bible and they're the ones who are going to usher in the kingdom. That's the spirit of strong delusion, you see. And somebody said, oh, that's a terrible thing. How could anybody believe that? Exactly. Spirit of strong delusion. Spirit of religion works that same way. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I'm I'm just, I'm waiting on God because I want the fire of God to burn. I I want the authority of the spirit to be made manifest. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Huh? Some people feel like running, the, running out of here. On fire. Running out of here. On fire. Eh? Eh? Hallelujah. It's true. Amen? And a great change takes place. Something similar happened to you. Huh? Run, you, this, I'm, listen, I'm telling you right now. This place is going to get hot. Every demon spirit that could possibly be have an acti- activity in your life is going to be made manifest. So get ready, because I'm telling you right now, you can't you can't hold it in. You can't hold it in. Not when the fire of God starts burning. Not when the light starts shining like Father has purposed to happen even in this night. <laughs> Hallelujah. About the time you start coming under the rule, rebellion will start screaming out. Huh? It sure will. Yeah. I wanted. In fact, I was just thinking about the fact that, hey, just before I go on, listen, Jake, come up here. Jake was in Hawaii just recently, and he stuck his, he was down in the reef, and somebody didn't tell him about don't stick your finger in the holes. And when you stick your finger in the holes, there's all kinds of creatures that live in them holes. Huh? And he discovered one, and it was an eel. And so the thing tried to bite his entire finger off, and uh, it came very close. It was a miracle that didn't get bit off. But what was the first thing you said when you got bit? In Jesus' name, the pain goes. He said, in Jesus' name, the pain goes. He's, see what's happening? He's being formed in the Pentecostal church with authority over pain. Did, did you have any pain? A little, and then it went down, and then it went down, and then I had no pain. That is amazing. What, what else happened? What else, what else did you say? I mean, you were gushing blood, weren't you? Yeah. What else did you say? Did you take authority over the bleeding or something like that? I, I'm trying to remember what all happened. Huh? 
Do you remember? I know I got you on the spot up here. But, and I know, it's just like everything, all everything you remembered, it goes away. When you stand up here. But it's just amazing what the Lord did. Let me look at your finger. Isn't that amazing, huh? Now, Father, we just thank you that there won't be any scarring or any neurological damage or tissue damage in any way on this finger that an eel tried to bite off. And we thank you, Father, that you gave Jake a gift of faith to say no pain in Jesus' name and to say bleeding stop in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Pentecostal movement. Thanks, buddy. It's not, it's not like, hurry, rush me to the doctor. It's rather, I mean, you know, everybody else knew that, do that automatically kind of thing. But it's, you know, it's Dan, Joshua, the same way, he was like 12 years old, battery blew up in his face, and he said, I don't burn in Jesus' name. And suffered no harm from it. The Pentecostal movement is a place where you and I step over into a divine authority over sickness, right. over sin, That's over right. disease, Amen. over torment over all fear, over all the powers of darkness, to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. And this is something that we realize not because we've read the Bible so many times. It's something that we begin to realize because we've had an encounter with God, because we love Him and we want to be led by the Holy Ghost and we want to please Him and we want to participate with the actual revelation of His glory and of His, of His power. We want His name to be honored. We want to sing praises, not so that it sounds good, but so that the earth will shake with the beauty and the splendor of heaven being expressed to us. People, the Lord said, as I live, the earth will be filled with my glory. But the reality of it is we don't understand the responsibility that we have to allow that river to come out of our innermost being. The expressions of heaven to come gushing forth. You'll leave it to somebody else to do. Is in the right, is in the right disposition. Huh? Is not in the right disposition. What kind of honor should we place and value should we place upon the church? The meeting place. What kind of honor and value should we place upon the gifts that God has given to the church? What kind of honor and value and riches should we place upon the gifts of the Spirit that have been made available to be made manifest huh? in all of our lives? If you don't love the anointing, if you don't cherish the anointing, then there's no way that you're going to be able to honor the anointing. And if you can't honor the anointing in one of God's servants' life, you're not honoring it in Jesus' life. It's, I don't care. Whatever you pretend. Imaginations. Are, run wild. Listen, your mind will play tricks on you. What you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do it to me, Jesus says. And how much more? How you interact with the anointing in, in every dimension in which it is displayed. You need to honor the anointing. And one of the things I love to do is I, I love to just go onto the YouTube and look at all these different people that are loaded up on YouTube. I mean, I've got 1.3 terabytes of every Thing that was recorded in the Pentecostal movement on tape, everything that A.A. A. Allen did, you name them, uh, you name it, uh, everything that was taped by William Branham, Jack Cole, uh, Catherine Coleman, Oral Roberts, just name them. And I mean, it's just, just wonderful just to sit and listen, just to listen. But you can go and Google and go on YouTube and you can hear all the mighty host of God. And you know what? You can hear them saying the same thing. Huh? We've been so removed from all that God placed in the church and then revived in such a radical way in the, in, in the early 1900s. And this cry of, of where it was thundering forth that the apostolic authority would begin to be seen in the earth once again. That the same authority and the same anointing uh, it, that was revealed in his glorious church in the first century will shine brighter than ever before. These are the words that were constantly going down in the 30s. Charles Price and in the, and, and, and the 40s and the 50s of, of all the different people that God was raising up. I'm telling you, I am a contender for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And being a contender, I am very sensitive to things that people are doing that violate that which God the Holy Ghost is doing. And it's time for a change. 
Listen, you and I need to come under the rule. We need to come under the rule. Amen. Amen. And then, and you know, I, I love, I love hearing Ruth Anna say, "Amen." To, you know, just right up there because I, I love I, I, the faithfulness that is there. The faithfulness more than anything else to flow in the anointing because she recognizes her responsibility to bring that which God has gifted her with, so that the church might be fully beautified, so that it might function and flow and operate in the participation of hastening His coming to be that minister and that witness that declares we want the righteousness of God to fill the whole earth. We want wickedness to come to an end. We want Christ Jesus to come to reign. Most people uh, and too too many people, I'm going to say it this way, are just all they're concerned about are their own self-interest, their own clothes, their own food, their own house, their own things, what's convenient for them. Everybody wants to step into the anointing that Wigglesworth had, that it wants to step in the anointing that Mariah Woodworth Etter had, wants to step in the anointing that John G. Lake had, wants to step into the anointing that we have many different witnesses to, but they're not willing to pay the price. And the price is that you come to an end of your own self-interest and having it your own way. Huh? In Jesus' name. And begin to take up this position that God has called us to take, to be strengthened with the Lord in the power of His might. In, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, recognizing that we are engaged. We're rushing on the city. We're climbing up the wall. We're going into the, we're crawling through the windows. Huh? Spoiling the house. Joel chapter 2, you have to go and read it. Great is the army. That carries out his word. The Lord's uttering his voice before his army. The spirit of the Lord speaking. The thunder sounds of heaven ringing. Hmm. Oh, sabah nadea. Now I'm locked into something. I locked into it this morning and I got it right now. I'm locked into something. I'm telling you right now. It's going. This time. I tell you, I got some apostolic authority happening right now. Some stuff is going to be changing. Some people are going to find themselves in a different location. Watch. Watch. I see the judgments of the Lord going forth so that the glory of the Lord may be made known. I see you. I'm going to tell you right now. It is a spiritual law. God's judgment goes forth that his glory may be made manifest. That the things that he wants to do might be advanced. I'm telling you. I'm, a whole lot of shaking's going on. The Spirit of the Lord was crying out to me um, uh, between church service. And I heard this, the Spirit of the Lord was saying, take a hold of everything and every person and shake them with your love. Take a hold of everything and every person and shake them with your grace. Shake them. Shake them with your judgment. Shake them with your power. Shake them with your mercy. There's going to be a whole lot of shakings going on. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Harabakata. 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 Harabakata yasate. Harabakata. And when you, when you begin to participate with this, as you begin to participate, participate with this, looking to and hastening to the coming day of the Lord, then you understand what it means to dwell in peace and to be spotless and to be blameless. You know what it means and understand what, it, what, what the value is when, when, we're, when we talk about living out of your life and all holiness and godliness because that's the context. That's the declaration that's far greater than a prayer, far greater than a word. It's, it's, it's a commitment. It's a doing. It's a deed. It's a state of being. I'm here gathered together waiting for the Lord to come. I'm not here just for another meeting. I'm gathered unto the Lord right now. You were supposed to have come and gathered unto the Lord. You're supposed to come and bring your very best. Anything else is disrespect. Folks don't get it. It's come as you are. No, it is not. Yeah, no. No, you're not making heaven that way. It's come when you can get here. No, you're not making heaven that way. It's coming. It's coming with that offering that he himself has provided for himself, Christ Jesus, that you and I are privileged to have his precious blood to come enter into a holy place by the spirit of grace, something far, far more precious to him than we understand. He says, you can blaspheme me and say all manner of evil against me and all manner of evil against Christ Jesus, Jesus said, but you can't speak or do or act against the Holy Ghost and ever be forgiven you. It's just too sacred. It's just too holy. It's just too glorious. It's 
just the very dimension of life and the very dimension of the power of God. You're not getting away with those violations. You're not getting away with it. And when you've got a church, and I'm telling you, this is what this church is that is contending for a revival of Pentecost, a reawakening of God's people, not going to have mammon, not going to have strange fire, but Holy Ghost fire. My goodness, you done found yourself not in just any church, but you found yourself in the church of Jesus Christ, pursuing the very divine will and passions of a living God. It's not just any ordinary place. Not just any ordinary place. It's not like being in, in advanced math and you can argue with the math teacher. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like being in physiological chemistry and you know more than the professor. It's not like that. Uh-uh. It's not like you being in, in, in any other area of life. And you're going to bring your opinion. It doesn't work that way. We all bowed low here. We've all been bent by the Spirit. We all begging God, pleading with Him, hungry and thirsting, loving those things which belong to heaven, saying, Thy will be done. Father, Thy will be done. Father, Your glory, Your power, Your manifest work of grace. Father, glorify Your name. Make known Your name. I'm not in any kind of, I'm not in a position where I'm still deciding whether I'm going to walk with God or serve, whether I'm going to serve God or serve the devil. I'm not in any such position. I'm not still wa- waffling between two opinions. I haven't made up my mind to sell out to God. That place is the flesh. That is the flesh. A lot of people say, oh, we're just walking in the flesh. And not, yeah, you are. Just come right out of your mouth. You're just telling on yourself. Huh? bunch of people left this place they left the abiding place and went and started a church called the place <laughs> take the abiding out is that ever prophetic we're going to go from the abiding to just the place give me a break strong delusion to keep you constantly in a ditch of religion no advancements you can hear about this glory of this great outpouring of the Holy Ghost and you'll never partake of it. You can hear about this maturing in, in, the, in, the, in the blessed riches of the Spirit to take this wonderful position in his Christ's stead and, and the glory of it and the majesty of it, but never get to have it, never get to handle it. It's got to be more important to you than anything else. Oh, hallelujah. And we're going we're gonna to press in for you. We're going to press in for you. We're going to stay with you till God says, I'm done. Huh? People always leaving. They think that they decide and they're going to go. No, no one decides they're going to go. The Lord drives you out. That's the way it works. Oh, we decided we're leaving. <laughs> you didn't decide nothing. It was grace that brought you here. That's all it is. It's grace that keeps you here. And when the grace is removed, you're gone. And that's a scary thing. And grace gets removed because you don't want to change. You want to have it your way. You want to argue about it. Huh? You want want God to condescend to you. All I'm just, look, I I hate to talk about the bad things. Just unfortunately, the bad things, some of the bad things are here. I'd rather just talk about the good things. I'd rather just talk about the majesty and the splendor and the glory and the purpose of God to bring you into a greater, you know, supplication and prayer in the Spirit. So God wants to lay upon you deep intercession, supplication, and prayer and petitioning in the Spirit so that you can begin to understand how to move in the gift of faith to change things right from your prayer closet. I'm going to be able to talk to you about how to step into the gift of faith and to begin to draw on and, 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 and receive the things of a supernatural supplied where that what God is doing, you get to participate with. In fact, it functions through your life. But then what happens is I'm, I begin to deal with things, at, things that are going on affecting the atmosphere, and I have to just turn to it. Honestly, I have to turn to it. There are times people don't, don't understand this, but there are times, and I'm not the only preacher that says this, that, that really the only right thing to do is before you ever do anything, just stand up and rebuke everything and everybody in the house. 
And then now that's done with, now we can go ahead and move on in the Holy Ghost because now everybody's ducking. And at least duck is a form of humility. It isn't the full-on bowing in the presence of the Lord, but it is a form of humility. It's like, uh, now God the Holy Ghost can talk. It's true. It's true. So I said, oh, that's just terrible. It is. It's time for the church now to start functioning as the church. It's time for God's people to take up their responsibility to live by the Spirit which is more manifested in what happens here in the context of church than anywhere else in your life. Don't tell me about what happened, you know, on the beach the other day. Because what you really have in God is going to be fully revealed here, not there. That is going to be an overflow. Here's where the light shines bright. Here's where you get, begin to get connected and hooked up in a way, in a very unique way that supersedes all other ways because God placed in the church these gifts of the Spirit. The church is what Jesus loves so much that he gave his own self for it. The church is what he's purchased with his blood. It's the church that he's baptized in the Holy Ghost and power. And you and I as individuals are benefactors of that which he gave to his church. Church. People want to think that the church is a benefactor of the individual. It's not. That is false doctrine. The individual is a benefactor of the church. That is true doctrine. It is the overflow of what God placed within the midst of the church when he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's what God placed in the church when he put their first apostles, secondarily prophets, after that teachers, then miracles and gifts of healing and, and, and governments and helps. And, we, and the list goes on. <laughs> it's in the midst of the church that the body of Christ hooks up and begins to function in a dynamic that is so unique to anything else that exists in all the universe. It is in the midst of the church that you and I individually begin to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit who takes us and baptizes us, immerses us down into the very person of Jesus Christ, the body. It's not something that happens one time. People just want to make it a one-time event. It is not. It's something that happens every time by the participation and volition of each one of our wills to say, okay, Lord, here I am. Lord, it's not about my life. It's about your life. It's not about what I want to do. It's about Holy Spirit. Come reveal Jesus. Come make known Jesus. Standing in the midst of the church. The church is his. He's the head of it. It's his body. It's the manifestation of his person, of his person that he's given you and I the right to be members individually, in particular, set in to this place in this glorious realm by the Holy Ghost if you and I individually say Holy Spirit take me and baptize me down into the body of Christ Amen. take me and baptize me into this glory when we, can start, when we begin to start singing about the glory we're for real up here we want this now we want these things now when we begin to start singing we are God we are people you are God you are God we are people we vow to serve you. I mean, it's real. It's a genuine talking conversation with Papa saying, Lord, take full control of this place. Here's what we're doing. Listen to me. I'm on my face. I'm crying out to God. I have some other people standing along with me in this. And I pray that every one of you will. And we're asking God to let his fire burn. To let the reality of his presence and the light of his glory so shine that every unholy, every ungodly thing, everything that would hinder the flowing of the Holy Ghost, everything that is offensive to the spirit of grace be removed out of the place. Either change, Satan has to go with or without the body. We prayed that he goes without the body, huh? But one way or the other, we're going to cast out devils. And Father's going to do it at another level. Father, show me. He's going to do it at another level. This is something that's sweeping the earth right now. This is the, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. What's going to happen? There is, a, there is a moving of God. Hallelujah. There's a stirring of God throughout the land. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, you started preaching. I started getting sick. I understand. You start preaching, I start getting a headache. I, I understand. I understand. We can fix that for you. I believe that one of the biggest things that we lack is an understanding 
of the role that we play in the divine plan and purposes of God for right now, for today. We want God to come down himself and do something in this generation to turn this nation, to turn the church, and what well, maybe start off just to turn our families and turn the church and then turn the nations back to him. But he's purposed to use us. He's poured out his spirit. He, he's poured out his grace. He's poured out all his power and divine authority and is made available to anyone who begins to get really serious with him. Who's willing to say in their heart, Lord, I want nothing else. I desire nothing else. Your anointing, the manifest power of your presence through my life and in my life. Here's my hands, here's my feet, here's my life. Wear me out for you. Lord, I let my life become a drink offering poured out upon the altar. Hallelujah. Oh God, all I want to do is live right now in a heavenly realm. I have no earthly interest at all, period. How can we do more, not only here in this place, in this church, in San Diego, but in the mandate that you have for us to go and touch the nations. Father, told me over and again, and everybody who's ever come here, the nations of the world will come to this place. I'm, not gonna, I'm, never, gonna, I'm never gonna hear the end of it. It's gonna happen. But what happens is the Lord is constantly working with the people because he's not gonna have, ultimately, there's not gonna be five or six people sitting around that can, get, that can come together Un, and be a, and function as the body of Christ. Father's looking for a people. Uh, uh, is it almost like a critical mass people, so that He can have a, this great divine explosion in the midst of? And that that is going to be the surrender of a lot of folks' will. And so you got you got an invitation to come from heaven, but you didn't realize that everything about you has to change. You thought because you got the invitation. Well, you're good to go, man. You're the big part of it. No. He gave you an invite because he saw something in your life that would be willing to change. Everything's got to change. Everything has to come under the control and rule and domination of the Holy Ghost. Everything has to be conformed to the Word of God, to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. That isn't some terrible religious burden. That isn't some terrible religious ritual. Ha, that is a rapture in the glory realm. Hallelujah. The Satan is doing everything he possibly can do to stop. So, here's Peter preaching the gospel. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. He says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Listen to this very carefully. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the time of the restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. I want you to look at one other verse of scripture with me real quickly in James. Real quickly in James chapter 5 and verse 7. We read, Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth, and he has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. I want you to look at one other verse of Scripture with me. Second Peter chapter 3, which I ministered on this morning. Verse 12, looking and speeding up or looking and hastening the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwells righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that you look for such things be diligent that you may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless without any blemish Ultimately, what God is telling us, what Peter is declaring, is he's talking about a people who are completely turned over in, and whose lives are totally bent to do the will of the Father. Whose lives are completely given over to the purposes of the kingdom of God. 
Heaven's going to hold on to Jesus until the restoration of all things. Heaven will hold on to him until Father says, now it's time. And Father put in the midst of the, church, in the earth a glorious church that has the expression of all the fullness of God. Jesus was the fullness of God manifested bodily. And Father put that glory in the midst of the church. And we've been willing to have religion. We've been willing to have ritual. We've been willing to just have programs. I'm saying God change everything. I'm saying God take it to another realm where people won't be satisfied with anything less than the fresh moving of the song of of, 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 of prophecy people won't be satisfied with anything less than the fresh moving of your mighty signs and wonders the arresting glory of his presence that breaks everything that shapes everything that molds everything where it all comes under the absolute authority of the sovereign Lord and the working of a Holy Spirit hallelujah 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 Here's the question. Will you be led by the Spirit? This is the question. Will you walk in the Spirit? This is the question. Will you live by the Spirit? This is the question. You're not going to unless you're continually willing to be continually filled with the Spirit. You're not going to so long as your mind's out here on other things and your cares are, 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 are wrapped up in all these earthly issues. Making your plans of what you're going to do with your life. Huh? You need to get on your face before God and say, Lord, I'm not in charge no more. I'm not. It's time. It's time now that business serve ministry. Huh? Instead of ministry serving business. Oh, my business is my ministry. Nonsense. Huh? Your business needs to become ministry. Hallelujah. It's time that God's people step out and begin to function in the Holy Ghost where there, there is enough gift of faith to recognize that God is a great provider, that He's a better provider than you've ever been for yourself and your family. Far greater provider. That it's time that you, that you begin to understand that you can step out. But you're not going to do this until you have an encounter with God. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have, you're not going to be able to walk in this kind of faith. This is a relationship that belongs to people who have totally sold out to God. They're not halting between two opinions. They're not still wondering whether they're going to go the world way or God's way. Whether they're going to do it their way or the way of the Holy Ghost. These are so, I'm talking about sold out people. I'm hoping, I'm praying that I'm talking to a bunch of sold out people. There's a, there's a lot of folks in here that I see that you're sold out. But there's some people here, you're still in the decision making process. And I want you to make the decision tonight. God wants you to make the decision tonight. He wants you to decide that you no longer live, that you were bought with a price, that you're not your own. There's too many people walking around like they their own. That they bought them. It's time to come under the rule. You can't be hastening the Lord, day of the Lord unless you're walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, living by the Spirit. And when you're walking in the Spirit, living by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, you under the rule. You live under the rule. Because you don't, the Holy Ghost shows us how not to live our own life. We don't want to live our own life. It's the Spirit of the Son crying, Abba, Father. It's the Spirit of the Son saying, not my will, but your will, Father. It's the place of divine glory. It's the place of prophecy. It's the place of visions and dreams. It's the place of miracles and signs and wonders. It's the place of visiting heaven. And everybody wants that, but everybody doesn't want to pay the price. Many are called, few are chosen. I mean, you're called. Father gives the opportunity for everybody to get the same reward, same price. Whether they bore the, the heat of the day, he hired them first thing in the morning, or whether he hired them 30 minutes before quitting time. And the guys, the guys who were hired 30 minutes before quitting time, they came and they got their wage. And those who had bore the heat of the day, been working for 11 hours, saw what the guys got when they was just working 30 minutes, and they go, my goodness. Think of what we're going to get when we get up there. They got the wages that we were promised, and they only worked 30 minutes. Let me multiply that by what? 22. Huh? Because I've been working 11 hours. Right? Yeah. 
huh? Then they get up there, and then all they do is they get the same wage. Now they all upset. They all upset with what they got. They're not satisfied with what they got. The Lord says, many are called, few are chosen. Father's going to try your attitudes. He's going to put the fire on you. He's going to see whether or not you're submitted to his kingdom. He's going to see whether or not you're submitted to the Holy Ghost. And you live in a rebellious age. You live in a wicked and perverse generation. You live in a culture that teaches you that nobody can tell you what to do. That you right. Huh? And anybody who disagrees with you, just pick it on you. They don't understand. They don't like you. Stand up and defend yourself. Or whatever. Come on, that's the spirit of the world. Satan designed it. It's the culture of the, it's the, culture of the, of the kingdom of hell. And everybody gets a choice. You're going to live in the culture of the kingdom of hell? Rebellion and stubbornness. Having your own way. Living your own self-interest. I'm going to live over here in the wonderful, beautiful realms of the kingdom of heaven. Because it's a, place, it's a place that only the broken live in. Only the lowly can live in. Huh? If you're going to step in, if you're going to step into the blessings of God, you're going to have to be completely surrendered to him. Huh? You're going to have to come learn of, you're going to have to come learn of, how to walk in humility because if you don't you step in the blessings of God it'll ruin you it'll ruin you you become self-confident you'll say my own arm has gotten me these riches huh you're going to start in the imagination oh it was all one big coincidence just happened to be wasn't really a miracle because your mind will play tricks on you but should we, should we just say come on Holy Spirit I'm going to live by you. I'm going to walk in you. I'm going to have my lifestyle in heaven. I have my lifestyle in all holiness and godliness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have an obligation. You're under responsibility. As many as are led by the Spirit, these are the children of God. That's not our, that isn't something up, left up for you to decide, oh, I know my heart is right. You know, God knows the heart. You don't have a right to judge me. I have the right to judge you. I am a judge in God's house, appointed by God as much as any person in the Supreme Court was appointed by the government of the United States of America. I have the right. I have the right. And I, and I hate to have to bring that out and say it, but it's just that we, we have to deal with defiant things all the time. And it's not so much, that, it's not so much just that it's just defiant. It's the fact of its bigger impact of how it causes, it puts a hold on the move of God. It runs interference with the flow of the Spirit. It's true. Because of the way I was going to go tonight was very different till I had to start dealing with this. But the things about it is, is Father doesn't, Father doesn't leap over top of it. He doesn't. He straightens it all out. And I want you to let him, I want, him, I want you to just let him have complete authority over your life. Just let him have complete authority. Just let him have complete authority over your life. To live by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, you're going to have to say no to a whole lot of things. You have to say no to a whole lot of things. To live by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, you're going to be empowered then by God to cast down imaginations. You listen to me. And everything that is contrary to God that's going on in your life, by and large, comes through the realms of imagination. Now to understand, when you look at the army of Joel chapter 2, and you look at the army of, Joel, of, of Revelation chapter 19, and Revelation, Revelation chapter 20, we see ourselves executing the righteous judgment of God against all evil, and against all sin, and against all wickedness, to destroy it. That's what it looks like. Huh? The Lord gives us authority to bind the strong man, to spoil his house. Hallelujah. Praise God. ha <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you understand, then you've got a picture of yourself. You've got a vision of yourself right now. 
And then you look over there in Ephesians chapter uh, 6 and verse 10. And you hear, be strong therefore in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Because you're in the midst of this conflict to destroy, to seek out and to destroy every foul thing of hell. To have authority over every unclean spirit to cast it out. Jesus by and large associated every sickness and disease with an unclean spirit. You listen to me. I'm going to say it again. By and large, Jesus associated every sickness and disease with an unclean spirit. And Father said, you go seek it out and destroy it and cast it out. Hallelujah. And you begin to think about this warfare that goes on where now we're just dealing with the battlefront of the imaginations, which is the reasoning and the logics of men running contrary to the mind of Christ and the mind of the Spirit and the ways of God that the Holy Spirit is here to teach us and instruct us in. Wow, what a privilege, eh? And he said, listen, you must be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might, being filled with the Spirit, in other words. Because that you might be able then to take on the whole armor of God, to begin to engage in the battle in the fullness of the dimension in which Father is engaged. The whole armor of God, not part of it, but to engage, uh, have the whole armor of God. To not sit around and high-five each other because you got your armor on, I got my armor, yours got a shining helmet. Man, do you look at my new gospel shoes I got? Wow, hey, check out this breastplate over here. Hey, let me check your sure sword, man. That's a powerful, fiery sword. It ain't about that. It's the, I got this whole armor of God to engage in it the way he's engaged in it the way... Jesus engaged in it in the Garden of Gethsemane. The way that Jesus engaged in it when he was manifested to destroy all the works of the devil. The way that Jesus engaged in it when he was crucified at Calvary's cross. The way that Jesus engaged in it when he, when he by himself, broke the strongholds of hell. That's just the way I deal with devils right there. I don't ignore nothing. Amen. Smash. Hallelujah. Listen, God wants to give you a Holy Ghost indignation against sin and the works of Satan that you'll have an authority and a faith, gift of faith that comes out of that authority that when you see sickness and disease, you do smash it. I smash it in Jesus' name. And something happens. Hallelujah. Things move around. Hallelujah. It's God's purpose that you and I go and touch the lives of those at Riley's, uh, uh, hosp uh, you know, Rady's Ch Children's Hospital and, and to touch the lives of the people and, and the, um, and the, convale com the uh, convalescent homes and, and to touch the lives of the people that uh, are even dead who died without knowing him call him back up out of the grave and up out of the pit I don't think anybody that's died didn't hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and burning in hell right now wouldn't love to be called back up out of the pit that's going to take some authority. Father's given that authority, but you're only going to learn how to function it because you're willing to be taught of the Lord. You're willing to be led by the Spirit. You're willing to say no to the things that are pulling you away. And there's a lot of stuff that's going on that people constantly, rep rep repetitiously allow. The things of this world, the imaginations, tricks of Satan to pull them away. They consciously, they consciously and unconsciously literally walk away from being led by the Spirit to go do their own thing. It's time that you get eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to understand, to be led by the Spirit, to be trained by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to have your whole life and manner of living in such a way to where God governs your heart and your mind. He rules you. This is a participation of your will on the highest order. This ain't happening just because you came and got in the altar. This happens because you stay in the altar. Your life becomes an altar. Take the whole armor of God because you're rushing on the city. Take the whole, whole, whole armor of God because you're climbing up the walls. Great is the army that carries that. Take the whole armor of God because the fire devours before you. And a fire behind you. Hallelujah. 
Because you're going everywhere conquering and subduing. Huh. You're going everywhere yeah, and making disciples out of the nations. Come on. It is time. It is time that somebody stirs himself up. Somebody gets valiant. It's time. Somebody begins to fully believe God. It's time. It's time that we, we begin to seek the Lord until he rains down upon our lives all the things that he has freely given. And it becomes a reality, an expression in our very being. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing my best to bring this meeting to a close early so that you don't have to stay up late to get up early. <laughs> Scripture says it's vain to, to stay up late and rise up early and eat the bread of sorrows. And so I reverse that. And the anoint, it's vain if you're just doing that in the natural. But in the anointing, I tell you right now, it just doesn't count. No bread of sorrows for you. I promise you that when we keep you up late, I'm up early in the morning going, Father, I pray right now, strengthen the people that are getting up and going to work. Hey, baby, I'm after. I'm just Father, and right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know what we press again for. Lord, we don't count our life dear unto ourselves. Father, we want to take hold of this realm. Are you just, just all you're going to hear me preach about. You're going to hear me preach about take hold of this realm. And then once everybody takes hold of this realm, God's going to fill my, my, my mouth with what to take. In the, in, in the realms of... Of the earth, what to subdue, huh? What to command? I want to step into an anointing in God, where I can say to the Prince of the Power of the Year, the Principality of Wickedness that reigns over Southern California, look at him square in the eyes and say, "You have to obey me." No, you go now in Jesus' name. I'm pressing into that realm. So I said, well, the Lord's given it to us. Yeah, he has. But I'm going to tell you right now, you have to learn how to walk in that authority. We have to learn how to walk in that authority. There, is, there are giftings. There are mantles. There are anointings that God has freely given that are not being manifested in the earth. And clearly not on the scale the Father wants it to be. And somebody's going to have to make up their mind, stir themselves up, and be valiant and say, you know what? I'm going to take hold of that. God's freely given it. And I'm telling you, there is a battle there's a battle with it. There is a battle with it. There is a fight with it. And that's why we need to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Taking ourselves the whole armor of God. Because we wrestle against spiritual wickedness. In high places. And now the Lord tells us exactly how to be equipped. Hallelujah. He tells us exactly how to begin to function. Now, there is a lot that's going to run interference with that. Because we just want to make it religious. We want to make a song out of it, and it's done. Huh? We want to make a whiteboard and a little, write a little pamphlet about it, and where it's over. No, it's now the practical application. There are things that are going to have to be, we're going to have to, have to say no to. We're going to have to begin to rule our spirit. God's given us the privilege to rule our spirit and submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, show me. Is this the right thing to do? Is it a wrong thing to do? The Word of God is a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our, a lamp unto our path, and a light, light lamp unto our feet, and a, lamp, and a light unto our path. Amen. Both. Lamp to our path and light to our feet, a light to our feet, a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Either both of them works. Amen. Solomon did three thousand proverbs, right? One thousand and what was it, seven songs, isn't it? You guys just read that, right? You're giving yourself to a strong diet of the word, aren't you? Huh? Really, it only takes 30 minutes a day to get through, nine, get through the Bible in 90 days. Really? It didn't take that long, does it? But what? You need four times a year. Just wait till you kick it up to six times a year. And then you have study time. Amen. Amen. And then you're able to listen to all these preachers preach, me and everybody else. Just constantly got in the, God going in the background. Stick in a me to your shy. Ling it back in a little I know a man of God stepped in great anointing of the Lord. What he did was he took another person whom God used in a mighty way. He took all of the anoint. He took all the. He took a. He took a, a bunch of. Uh, of the cassette tapes of him praying in the Holy Ghost at different times and put it all on one tape. So it's two hours and he plug it in praying in the Holy Ghost. With this man of God two hours and then I meant that I did that let's keep it running Satan hates tongues 
He hates this manifestation of Pentecost because it's an entrance gift. It's a way to begin to step in and hook up with a greater dimension of participating with the spirit of truth. And people, we're just going to have to understand. We're just going to have to, you're going to have to kick it in. You're going to have to step up. Huh? I remember when Joshua was 16 years old, his voice was still a little squeaky. And he was telling me, Dad, I can't sing. I said, oh, yeah, you sing. No, no, Pops, I can't sing. No, you can sing. And it's still, every once in a while, you know, high C would sneak out. And I wasn't in the meeting. Dad wasn't in the meeting. Because basically back in those days, I did all the music, really. And he wasn't there. He wasn't going to allow there to be a gap. He wasn't going to allow that realm of the anointing, that realm of glory to be absent from the meeting. He took personal responsibility for the house of God, and he stepped into an anointing. Hey, same thing will happen to you. I'm just using him as an example. All of a sudden, you personally take responsibility, not just so much for whether or not there's bugs crawling across the room or whether the, tree, the chairs are in order or whatever, which is all good, or whether the lights are on and the cameras are rolling and the sound system is good. And praise God for everybody who does that. And too many times, most of the work fall upon few. Praise God for clean floors. Praise God for clean bathrooms. Those, and those didn't happen by themselves. <laughs> Just, you know, praise God, miracle took place, bathrooms are clean. No, people put their hands to the work. But there's something bigger. What is the gifting that you bring? What is the gifting that God has required you to bring? that begins to be developed out of your life by le being led by the Spirit, by walking in the Spirit, by being filled with the Spirit. Huh. By being led by the Spirit, by giving yourself over to this interaction with the Holy Ghost because it's not a natural gifting that Father's interested in. It's not human fire, strange fire. It's divine grace. It's divine fire. Will everybody stand with me? Mambra da sikila pa karastai. Moro sandale si pakadea. Mambra sedere. Mambra bevekete. Malamo sebera si tikila. Sibris to tost. Melanga de beste. Praise God. Clean the bugs up. Mambra sepe. Moro stanani. Moro stanani atu. 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 For me, these meetings are about you making a decision. Not only are they about you making a decision to fully follow the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's about you getting hooked up with the Holy Spirit to know how to, to then participate with the call of God upon your life. It isn't just something that we, you can live without. It's something that you need. It's something that you've got to press in for. And I'm telling you, when God anoints you and begins with, in a greater dimension and begins to use you in a greater way, all you're gonna, what's going to happen is you're going to become more dependent. That's all. You're going to just, be, you're just gonna be that much more devoted to living by Him and living in Him because it's the greatest thing going. Hallelujah. It's not some kind of slavery. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, how do you want to do this? Lord, how do you want to make this thing happen here tonight? Lord, how do you want to break off this stronghold? How, want to, how do you want to break off every unholy influence? How are you going to do this, Lord? Father, how are you going to bring the correction that you want to bring? How are you going to bring the instruction that you want to bring? How do you want to bring the gifting that you want to bring? How do you want to fill those of God? that are in this place tonight with the ability to function in a realm in you that surpasses anything that they knew up to this moment. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, one of the things I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying is that He doesn't want anybody to be sick and diseased in the house. He doesn't want people to be in pain, neither physically nor mentally. It's very difficult to be able to yield to the Lord and walk with them and 
the relationship he has for you when you're walking in torment and pain. You're walking in sickness and disease and harassment. When you're walking in fear. I want you to just come. I want to just, those of you walking in fear, you're under the authority of fear. You're under the tor torment of fear. The Lord wants to touch you tonight. He wants to set you free of that. What, you, what, the Lord wants, what the Lord wants to do is He wants to so bring you into a relationship and a freedom with Him that when you hear the fiery declarations of the things of the Spirit, all it does is ignite within you a greater passion to have them. You don't draw back. You don't back up. There's just a greater passion in you to have that which Father's... Announcing is yours. I want to also begin to pray for those who you're not, you just really don't have the made up mind. You can still easily be encouraged by the imaginations and the influences of this world. To be involved with the things of this world. You haven't made up your mind to just to serve Jesus. You haven't made up your mind to turn your back on the world. You're still easily influenced by things of, the, of this world. We want, we want that thing to be broken off of you tonight. Father's calling you. He's talking to you. Come here, baby. see the spirit of the Lord saying, I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. He is, and I hear the same exact thing. Be strong. Be of good courage. Just do it. Fear not. Be of a willing mind, because I'm a jealous God. I'm jealous over your emotions. I'm jealous over your passions. I'm jealous over your thoughts. I'm jealous over my people. I'm jealous over my land. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. One day the Lord, I was just talking to him, and he said to me, he's, I was just asking him about jealousy. God, I don't understand this jealousy that you have. And he impressed on my spirit what I would do, how I would judge if something, if someone became unfaithful to me. I said, God, I'd, I'd take them to the wilderness. I'd tie them to a tree. I wouldn't give them water. And I'd pray over the Holy Ghost until they became single-hearted and faithful to me once again. And then I broke. And I said, God, if I ever am unfaithful in my thoughts and my emotions and my desires, tie me to a tree. Don't give me water, oh God, until I become single-hearted and faithful to you once again. That's pretty radical, baby. He is a jealous God in every area. He's jealous over you because it's such a great and intense love that he has for you. He wants all of you. Listen, the Lord is, there's a couple of people that the Lord is talking to very strongly right now. You ought to just come. You haven't fully made up your mind to serve God. You're still halting between two opinions. You're easily, you could be easily influenced. You know that you have a continual up and down thing going on in your life. Why don't you come right now? I'm believing God to break it. Christina, why do you wait? Why do you wait? Because what happens is I watch people in a perpetual backsliding thing going on. And they go good for like a month. And then something comes to take them out and they're down. And it, it's just a continual cycle. I want, you should want the stuff to be broken. Father's got a great plan for your life. He wants to use you in some radical ways. But he is a jealous God. He, he doesn't like to be passed around. 
He doesn't like to be loved one day and then, you know, swapped out the other day. One day you're ready to serve him, and the next day you're not sure. One day you're ready to glory, you know, bring glory and honor to his name. The next day you're just, you know, it doesn't even matter. You're just so filled up with whatever it is you want to do, then you just let the consequences fall as they will. God wants to change that. Now, those of you here that you, just, you feel that, you know, you're solid in where you're at with God right now, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to be just hooked up with me as we pray for these up here that stand in a place of need. Because I, I'm telling you right now, the first and foremost, the front line right here tonight is I'm dealing with the spirit of fear. And this thing is going to be broken. Look. Father wants to reign over your life with love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. Father wants to reign over your life with love. Just lift your hands towards heaven. You stay here. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Listen, when the Lord touches you tonight, when we take a hold of this thing tonight, let it be settled forever. Let it be settled forever. Let it be settled forever. So, some of you tonight who have been haunting to, back and forth between opinions, you're going to have to stop that. You're going to just have to stop making your own plans for your life. I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me. God never sends anybody out anywhere until they fully establish in the things of the Spirit. People go different places. But at some point, you've got to start living your own life and, and just decide, wait a minute, there's a bigger plan going on. Huh? There's a bigger plan going on than, where, than just where I retire. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Bigger plan. Lubara de Sitea. Lubara da Sieta. Lubara da Sieta da Mosai. Lubara da Sieta da Namakia Kata. Hallelujah. Just know, I want everybody that's standing up here tonight, I just want you to know that you're stepping into another realm in God. Things will not be as they've been. They will not be as they've been. They will not be as they've been. been. Because the Spirit of the Lord is here to break off the yoke. He's here to change everything. But, you know, as we were talking to you the other night, you can't leave here without commitments. I was so blessed. When, when Daniel came and started taking people's electronics from them. Because you can come up here and you can say, Okay, Lord, I'm surrendering. I don't want those in my life. But if you go back to the same lifestyle, if you go back to the same things, you're going to be brought back under the same bondage. You're going to have to make commitments to say, Okay, this is what we're going to do from here on in. Amen. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> we're staying in, not going out, right? This is what we do. Here on in the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God's right here, right now, moving among you. Spirit of the Lord's here. Bold of Sardinia. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on me. Oh, Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on me, mold me, make me, break me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. 
a spirit of the living God, a far fresh on. Say, break me. Break me. Melt me. Melt me. Mold me. Mold me. Make me. Spirit of the living God. For see the see see the Holy Spirit standing in front of you right now, and He's more in love with you than you are with Him, and He wants to use you more than you want to be used by Him, and He wants to fill you more than you want Him to fill you. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Lura satara neyata. There is no condemnation for anybody in the place. Rather, there's an opportunity, a call to come up into a higher place. Huh. There's an opportunity to come and live in His divine plan, in His protection, in His provision. And all the things that... He is freely given. Father has given us an invitation in the most amazing kind of life that it's just impossible for us to even begin to grasp the reality of it. We have to have him to be able to do it, to grasp the reality of it. All we have to do is begin to obey. It's just to say, okay, Lord, I may not grasp the whole reality of what you called me into, but I've got enough understanding to recognize what it is that you've asked me to do, and I'm willing to obey you. I'm willing to put your stuff first in my life. I'm willing to trust you, and I'm willing to honor you, and I'm willing to love you, and I'm willing to commit my life to you in a more radical way. And then he takes it from there.
Say, Lord, break me. Melt me. Mold me. Make me. Now, Miss Amy, I just let you know something. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because He's anointed you. <laughs> He's not going to withhold any good thing from you, not a single dimension of His manifest presence and power and His glory. You can step into the mantle of the Spirit. You can begin to run in the realms of prophecy and the word of knowledge and the authority of the Spirit to preach and to proclaim the good things of heaven. They're yours. They're yours. He's giving them to you. They're upon you. They're upon you, dear. They're yours. They're just yours. They're yours. Father has given you the ability, a miraculous ability to be different, not to be the same. He's given you a miraculous ability to be different. All you need to do is begin to believe what he said. If you'll do, if you'll believe what he said, you begin to move in a realm called faith. The gift of faith will hit you that you have been given the ability to be different, to live a miracle kind of life, a heavenly kind of life. Everything changes in that realm. Everything changes. Brastiki, Brusta Igna, Brastiki, Brusta Tarn, Ersta Redipist, Brasta Teddy, Brasta Tegarita, Brasta Kirina Mopro. I'll just tell you this. It takes far more faith, if you had to measure it, to walk in the miracle realm of a new life than it does to get up out of a wheelchair and walk. Which is it easier to say? Your sins be forgiven you or take up your bed and walk? But you may know that Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto you, take up your bed and walk. I'm telling you, the miracle realm of living out this glorious gift of faith, of walking in the Spirit and living in relationship with the Lord. 
is something that you have to lay hold of and you have to believe in a realm of supernatural believing, something the Holy Spirit just supplies, that you be willing to be rooted and grounded and settled in love and say, this is what God said and this is the way it is and I believe it and it's mine. Amen. Because most of the things that the Lord Jesus said when he worked a miracle is he said, be it unto you according to what you believe. And he was there to supply the faith. But he said, be it unto you according to that what you believe. So tonight, if I lay hands on you, and I'm agreeing with you that this thing is going to be changed, look, you can't go back to doubt and unbelief. You're going to have to be willing to hook up with me and say, this is a change. This is, this is what God has done. It's not what I have deserved, and so thus God has given it to me. It's what God has done. It's a miracle provision that he's provided through his son. It's mine. And now, now all we have to do is just cooperate. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can't go to the same places. We can't do the same things. We can't say the same things. We got to catch ourselves in our misbehaving if we're screaming and hollering and throwing a fit or whatever it is that we do. The world presents itself as though it's going to give you a good identity and something that you just can't live without, only to take you into the depths of death and shame you. And I pray God give you the wisdom now and to understand that. So those things can't play its game on you no more. You know, one time I was dealing with some things that's going on with people's life. And the, and the Lord said, well, if you saw, I mean, he spoke to me like this. He said, you, under, you must understand what I want from you. He said, if you saw a mountain lion creeping around your, your calves, what would you do? I said, Lord, I'd shoot it. And I mean, the Lord just, you know, wants me to deal with things that would try to take you out. Same things that try to do. Look, Satan, it's true. Look, you got, people got to wake up. It's like folks get so busy doing whatever it is that they're doing that, I mean, it's like their little lamb is surrounded by a bunch of wolves and they like, you know, well, I'm going to pray. It ain't time to pray. If you see, it's time to get up and do something. Oh, we're going to pray. And we're going to get the gun and minister, so to speak. Huh? Somehow, how are you doing? You know, you need to always be sitting on the front row. <laughs> huh? Le no zikai. Le no zikai eke. Le lo guje gia 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 nanea. Zu ye ze du maya. I always have special interest in little baby lambs. I have be I be spurai. Here, there's a chair right by you. I have always a special interest in baby lambs. And I pray that you do too. I, I, I pray that you do too. Have you ever seen a baby lamb born? They're so tender, frail. They're so tender. You take care of them. And I pray that God's people will be filled with this compassion. 
and just really take take really good care of baby lambs. Thank you, Jesus. I am so excited about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Signs, wonders, and miracles. I was praying about, Ann and I were praying about Summer the other night. It was just like, the Lord's just going to take her into signs and wonders and miracles. And, and that's just, she's not going to slow down for nothing. Huh? Uh, I, I, and I, I'm just going to watch out and make sure that no wrong influences are around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want her to have any influences, but Holy Ghost influences. It's true. I believe that the church was the, the church it's, that God wants. All there is is Holy Ghost influences. And when the lost come in or when new baby lambs are born, all they can see is a dominating glory of the divine power of God. There is no other influences even available in the house. <laughs> it work in the house. You with me? Yes. It's Pentecost. Where the fire of God is burning. Where the holiness of the Spirit of the Lord is being responded to by everyone. Where everybody's already a partaker of that wonderful outpouring of the Spirit. Where their prophecy is already flowing. Where the operation of the Holy Spirit is already present. And the same goes for you. Yes. Absolutely. The same thing goes for you. You ain't gonna be left out of nothing. You don't have to worry. You're not gonna be left out of nothing. You Holy Ghost girl, you get radical. You don't have any time for anything. It's not, not of heaven. You just don't have time for it. It's not the Holy Ghost. Just don't have time for it. What's going on with your foot? You, you, who said you broke it? The X-ray said you broke it. How bad did you break it? It was pretty good, but the small, small bone completely separated? It's not out of the line, just completely separated. There's no attachment. It just is a tiny little bone. It's pretty good, but it feels right now. Well, we've commanded to be healed right now. I mean, what the Lord did for you the other night when you began to give up the electronics and say look I'm, I'm having consecration you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm going to have I'm, because what happens is people come under the Holy Ghost conviction they come up to the front and they say you know I want to get this right but they don't understand where they're going to make changes where they're going to consecrate where they're going to commit and so therefore they just go right back into it they have no ability they've not separated themselves from it you have to separate yourself from the sin you have to separate yourself from the whatever it was, the snare, whatever was the trap. Separate yourself from it for a year. And I tell you, it'd be done. It'd be done. You're going to have to stand up against everything that Satan can throw at you over a period of year. He, I'm, the devil gets real mad if he can't mess with you for a year. He comes out with every force of hell. He just keeps amplifying it until all of a sudden Father said, that's enough. It's enough. It's done. Finish. It's finished. Because Papa puts a limit. He just allow Satan to tempt us above what we were able. And he puts a limit on it. He puts a limit on it. When he says no, he said no, 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 no. That's it. It's no. Bye. Out. He does. He doesn't transgress our will. The father, father could just go, no more temptation. <laughs> But he's letting it, he's, he's, he's letting our lives be examined. He's letting our lives be developed to where when we say no, it's really no. No to the sin and yes to him. That's what he's. Somebody said, How hard is it to live without sin? It's actually very easy. But it's only very easy when you're, when you're drinking of the. Whew, whew. We need That's one thing about praying for people when the anointing hits them, you get it too, you know. Whew. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm telling you right, Deborah's got it right. 
She does. She's got it right. She's not really interested in school. She's re interested in church. Huh? Hallelujah. She's interested in being what all she can be for God. And I believe that the Lord is going to use her in, a mo in the most amazing ways. In the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But as I was saying, when you're drinking of the good things of heaven, it's like you're so full, there's room for you. And there's room. There's no room for anything else. Now, is there, is there the Lord say? Let not your heart be sad. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions, many dwelling places. I prepared one for you. That's what the Lord said. I really don't, I really don't so much even care about anything other than hear, pleasing him and hearing him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because I'm going to tell you right now, God said, Surely as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. He just said, I'm, I'm going to be patient here. I know, the, I know these guys are rejecting me. They don't want me. They don't want to hear me. They don't want to listen to me. They don't want to hear my voice. What a rejection, eh? Father comes in his love and his glory and his mercy to speak to them. They, no, we don't want to hear him. We're going to die. You go talk to him. Most of whatever he says is going to tell us. This is okay. But I'm going to tell you right now, sure as I live, there's going to be a people who want to be around me. There's going to be a people who want to live with me, who like my lifestyle, who like what I chose. Hallelujah. I'm one of them. No more halting between two opinions. And no more staggering about. No, in Jesus' name. Because I hear the Lord saying the time has come. The time is the Lord. I hear the Lord say the time has come for the decisions to be made. That's what I hear the Lord saying. And when the Lord begins to talk like that, you want to make sure that you hear that very clearly I mean when's the first time when is the first time that you said Lord come into my life 12 years old and look at how much back and forth there comes a time now you need to understand the commitment You need to understand your need to be in every meeting. You need to understand it on the level of the, of the, of the opposition that has come against you. It has constantly been effective against you and it's got to stop. Father's got great plans for your life. 
His plans for you is no different from his plans for anyone else. But there comes a time. And let it be this time. Let it be tonight. Amen. <laughs> now, somebody might take pauses when they say, I am dead with Christ. I'm buried with Him. But just hang on, because the next verse is, I'm raised up and alive together now. That's the resurrection. Be sure there's no resurrection until there's a death. Hey, There is no resurrection until there's a death. I'm dead with him. I'm crucified with him. I'm buried with him by baptism into his death. That's how certain it is for me. I have a security because my will is resigned. I have a security for my will is designed. Resigned to Him. Father wants you to have a security where your will is resigned to Him. And now being kept by the power of God, the one who's began this good work in you is able now to complete it. Amen. Why? So, Zoe, what is it that you want from the Lord, dear? Huh? You don't know. Take a guess. Why are you standing here right now? Hmm? That's a good thing to be more hungry. And that's something, that's, it's in, in, it's something that the Holy Spirit supplies. He gives us that hunger because we ask for it. But then you know what he does is he makes requests of it of us. He tells us to be obedient. He tells us to submit to authority in our lives. He shows us that over and again, you can't do it your way. That's a hard thing to learn, isn't it? It really is. And when you begin to deal with it as a, you know, preteen, teenager, it's like, what? You're kidding me. I can't do things my own way. I have to obey everybody around me? When do I get to start giving out orders? When do you learn how to take them real good? It's tough to be bossed around all the time, huh? You need to be. It's safety. It's good. Say, uh, you should go around and uh, you should wear a sign around your neck. It says, please boss me around. If you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I'm interested in being told what to do. Because that is the quickest way to step over into the realms of glory. Through Christ Jesus, what all do you reckon you can do? That's right, you passed. So is there ever an excuse not to be able to do all things? There really isn't. Don't protect and babysit a problem. Run it off. Oh, well, I, I've got a problem. I've, I've run into people. Well, I've got this little disease. And it's like they're bringing out their favorite pet. Jesus, help us. First thing, we're going to have to turn this thing into it. We're going to have to turn this thing into the monster that it is. What's up? Get happy right now in Jesus' name. Get happy right now in Jesus' name. Get happy. Teresita, you're healed.
You're a very different woman than the woman I first met. She's a very different woman. You've grown a whole lot just in the past year. I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me tonight when you were standing behind me. Actually, before I got to church, he said, I'm bless her. I'm going to honor her. She so wants to flow and be used by me in music. You see, there's nothing that we do is hidden from the Lord. He sees the passion. Of how, oh, God, how do I do this? Oh, Lord, I want to be used. That doesn't go unnoticed by the Lord, and it doesn't go unnoticed by those who know him. It's true. Those who are hearing what he's saying. Yeah. Sometimes we think, well, no, you know, Papa doesn't see. He sees. And I could hear you playing, and I could hear the anointing. See, it, it, somebody said, well, I was just playing some simple chords I've always played. Yeah, but now the Holy Ghost was in it like he wasn't in it before. Because a C chord isn't a C chord when the Spirit of the Lord is on it and it's flowing through your fingers. C chord is all of a sudden different. It's all of a sudden different. It's got another texture, another feel. When, when we were younger, we would just line up all these different kinds of instruments, you know. Play a banjo for a while, play guitar play for a while, play this for a while, that for a while, you know, just 12 string, different kinds of, different kinds, you know, keyboards, different kinds of instruments, you know, different kinds of, uh, of string instruments that they're from ukuleles to auto harps, whatever, just looking for different kinds of inspiration, you know. Play the violin like a guitar, pick it out. Just do whatever we want, whatever, just to find that, do that sound. And when you got about, you got about 10 people doing this that are all very good musicians, pretty radical stuff. Because you're looking for some, you're looking for something new. You're looking for something that just sparks the thing. God, the Holy Ghost just got it going on. I don't even, I don't even need nothing. I don't even need to clap. It's just got it going on for us. It's got it going on for us. I'm a Ura Basatea. Thank you, Jesus. The one thing that you want to begin to contemplate is the depths of God's love for you. Just to know the goodness of God and the love that He has for you. And all these things that run in, a lot of times what we're doing is we're addressing the things that are lying to you and running interference, and we're busting that thing, and we're breaking that thing off just so that you can begin, you begin to sit back and go, whoa, amazing love. I pray that you get so earnest with me about busting hell busting the lies of Satan that is doing all of this lying against the truth, hiding this wonderful relationship that Father wants to have with every human being, this wonderful realm of glory. I pray that you get so earnest about this because, folks, Father has left it in our charge as to whether or not we're going to carry the same kind of love and same kind of passion as he has. If we do, we're going to advance things around here. Truly. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Pour out your love right here, Father. Pour out your love. Pour out your love right here. Pour out your love, oh God. Pour out your love right here. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. What what happened to my help? What a woman the Lord gave me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a Holy Ghost woman. Jacqueline you know what you can be like you can about be like Phineas with the javelin <laughs> you taking no nonsense you taking no nonsense no nonsense and there ain't gonna be no sickness on you no disease on you you're gonna live in divine health and you're gonna walk in divine health and you're gonna minister divine health hallelujah this gifting of the Holy Ghost is on you hallelujah it's been on you and it's just going to continue to, to, to develop and mature. And you're just going to be the no-nonsense javelin type Phineas person. Because that's just the way the Lord's made you, just radical. Just radical. The Father's got to have Phineases in the house. He's got every different gifting and just find that place that's in Jesus name ain't no things supposed to be harassing you now huh hey nothing's supposed to be harassing you hey huh nothing has right to harass you why worry when you can pray huh why be troubled about something when you have the authority to change it? Because if you get into the worry that keeps you from the pray prayer, huh? And you get into the you get into the concern that keeps you from the faith, then you've been robbed of your ability to be used by God to bring change. Huh? Now in Jesus' name. And these things that harass and torment your thoughts now and burden your heart, I'll break it off of you. I'll break it off of you. And you better, better, this thing better obey. I'm going to start screaming and hollering here in a minute. Huh? Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. You don't allow those things to harass you. You don't allow those things to be in your mind and your thinking. You hear me? Here we go. That's better. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of the living God, Satan, you obey me, you fast spirit of harassing, tormenting, lying imaginations. You have no right to touch the property of God. You have no right to mess with her. In Jesus' name. You have no right to mess with her. Listen, if you just find your identity in Jesus, all the rest of the stuff that people make a big deal out of and make a big fuss over, it doesn't matter no more. It don't matter anymore. It don't matter no more. Hey?
you can be far more influential than Jesus in terms of how you impact the world around you than the most talented per person on the earth could be in, in, the, in the framework of humanity. Just decide. You know, just decide what you're going to do with yourself. Huh? Have you decided what you're going to do with yourself? Yeah, that's good. Listen, dear people, you girls that are just waiting for the day that you get married, that's a thought, that's a, that's a distraction. That's just, that's a supplement, as it were. Well, it's worse than that. It's a substitute. Just find all your life in Jesus and let him take care of the rest. Then you're not running after the wrong thing with your life. You hear me? Sometimes when people have it, things difficult at home, that is an, you know, an onus to go searching and looking for the wrong thing. Okay? Okay? Brad, did you have something you wanted to share? Have something on your heart? You know, what ha you know what's happening? <laughs> Father's rubbing in oil. <laughs> Something that they kind of say. That's what happens when Father's rubbing in the oil. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's not just a good feeling. It's get actually, it's a token of you getting oil rubbed in. Hallelujah. Sotera. Sotera. Isipodanea. Isipodanea. Hallelujah. Rub in the oil. Rub in the oil. Rub in the oil. Gone. Rub in the rub in the oil. The scripture says we have an unction from the Holy One. That means the oil has been rubbed in. It's a smearing. It's for the oil. Oil. You take the oil. It doesn't really work to pour it. Get it kind of. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Father, give you wisdom. How'd you like that? How'd you like Father give you some wisdom? How'd you like that? So I wants to give you some wisdom. How would you like that? I like it. Okay. He wants to give you some wisdom. Papa give you some wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is a beautiful thing. You know what wisdom does for you? It allows that you understand things that you before never could. You never got it. And you're just like, wow. This is amazing.
you got to understand, dear people, I'm laboring to cause you to begin to cry out for a realm that it's impossible for you to even be able to understand or comprehend or interact with without the miracle working of the power of God in your life. And Father's made it all so easy. He's not made it hard. It's just amazing. All we got to do is one. We, it's free, but it's not cheap. We just got to, we want, we need, we, Pura Basete. I've been doing this all day, starting three sentences at one time. It's not cheap. It's free, but this is not cheap. We've got to want these things more than anything else in life. Now, it is my purpose. I have purpose in my spirit. That the same anointing that I'm standing in here right now, that everybody, that everybody in this place will have what God has given to me and far more. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And so, and, 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 and the beautiful thing is, all you have to do is be in agreement with that and want that. And Father, I ask you, cause this old poison oak to dry up in Jesus' name completely. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing upon Dwayne, upon his life. Father, I thank you, just, I thank you for honoring his faithfulness. His consecration to you in Jesus' name. La Bostai. La Bostai. La Bostai. La Bostai Ramai. La Bostai Ramaya. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for honoring him. Honor Dwayne Lindstrom. Honor and bless his house. I just get to honor him and bless his house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's actually a very good thing, just to wake up every morning as you're going, you know, through the getting ready for the day, routine being prepared by, by the Lord. It's just the Lord brings people up to you. Just, Father, bless them, honor them, bless their house, fill them up, touch them. Let him experience the moving of your presence, the moving of your spirit. To where that the reality of who you are is bigger than all the other things they thought were real. So that you become the most important thing to them. Most important person. Because Look, the more you obey him, the more you get to see. Somebody said, well, why can't we see and then we'll obey? Because it's been proven again and again. You won't obey because you see. You won't walk with him because you see. He's revealed himself over and again to people, and that didn't change nothing. When the heart is right and you really want God, that takes care of it all right there. You don't need to see. And then what happens is the Lord allows you to see. Yeah. It's true. Father purposes to remain an invisible to remain in an invisible realm so that he can develop within us those things that are essential for our eternal walk with him that otherwise would lay dormant. beautiful thing is he comes in dreams and visions. <laughs> Just imagine stepping into a realm with God or like Mariah Woodworth Utter. She began preaching. It was up in Colorado. She began preaching. She was making a point. She went up into heaven. She stood there for three days. People came from all over the United States of America to look at her. Psychologists, hip, 
hypnosis preachers different denominations came she just stood there people said wait she's not in a trance she's not she's not like what goes on with a hypnotic state because everything is normal all of her vital signs are normal blood pressure is the same heart rate's the same she stood there she came back down out of heaven and took up right where she left off three days later because she just went to visit for just a few minutes she had visiting rights happened to her all the time I mean I, I you know I get jealous of that stuff so we're just going to do it we're going to do this I'm telling you translations raising the dead it was so funny the other day when we were in here I'm going to let you guys go because you know you know a lot of people got to get up early in the morning but we had people in here brother Yun was here and I said hey I got a mission plan for Saudi Arabia and for Mecca Saudi Arabia and um on Ramadan everybody's looking at me like and then when I said my mission plan is to be translated in on Ramadan to preach for five minutes and just before they grab me disappear and then wait 30 45 minutes and they come back and then everybody's gonna listen for a while you know it just goes on it goes down like it's some kind of a fairy tale fantasy no 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 these are things that we can do And the more we interact with them, the more we realize it. Faith grows and builds in our life. Start seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. Listen, I want to see more signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to see more display of signs, wonders, and miracles. And the reality of it is, is you get to participate with the atmosphere of it. You just keep coming and doing what you guys did this, this, uh, the, before the service tonight. Watch what happens. Just keep doing that. Is there anyone with... Anyone with any pain in your body before we dismiss? Is there anyone with any pain in your body? What's wrong with you? Anyone else with any, just stay right there. Anybody else with any pain in your body? Anybody with a headache, tension in the back of your neck, your head, head cold? Anyone, I just want you to come. I'm going to pray for you because I, I just don't want anybody live, leaving with any sickness or disease. Me healed. Me healed. Me healed. Healed. Me healed. Me healed. Me healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed, Mendesitai. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Lydia, where are you at? I want to pray for you again. We love you so much. <laughs> Lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name. And the crowd of you head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Rathekista. Randy, come stand here by her. Where's Jonathan? Jonathan, come here. Pray for your home. Because I think that's part of what I'm feeling here. Let's let your hands towards heaven.
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them. Listen, don't forsake your giving. God will work a miracle for you giving. Just be faithful in giving. Just be faithful in giving. We want people to participate in giving because we know the miracle that is in it, the miracle of provision. You honor the Lord with your tithes. Honor the Lord with the offering. Just continually faithful give. He'll bless your, he'll bless your finances. You will not lack. You will not lack. He'll work miracle provision for you. What's up? Um, I just I want you to pray for wisdom um, because I really want to talk to some family members that don't know the Lord. And just, you've been cool. It's called anointing. <laughs> it's called anointing. anointing. Anointing does it all. Anointing gives you a word of authority that pierces the heart. Amen. The wisdom is to proclaim this gospel of the kingdom. All the words of this life. They that believe shall be saved. There's no apologies. There's no defense necessary. Here's what it is. Now, in Jesus' name, speak. Speak. Okay. Good. However, I don't know when exactly I don't know if it's from God or not, or if I'm like trying to make up my own business, you know, because I feel like I have to be there. But we'll just begin to step out in faith. You can start wherever your faith is at. And if it's the faith is to do it alongside of what you're doing right now, that's fine. And then as the Lord just builds you up in faith, then you can move from there. Uh, it's one step at a time. The Lord allows us to place our foot most certainly in a realm of faith. See, faith knows this is going to work. This is God. This is going to happen. No matter what it is. Whether it's miracles, signs, wonder, business, whatever. Father takes us up. Step at a time in faith. Amen. Amen. Don't have to run ahead in her mind. Okay. Step at a time in faith. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 